Hey, Aileen, how are you? Hey, Craig, how are you? Good. Thank you, my co-host. How's everybody doing? Good, how are you, Steve? Good. Super. Hey, everyone. Hey, Ashley. Hey. Hello. Hey, Rob, how are you this evening? I am well. How is everyone? Doing well. So it looks like the uh, Yankees are rain delayed. Yeah, it's pouring. Yeah. So. Not raining here. That's good. Eileen, I saw that Chandra was out for tonight, right? Yes, Craig did tell me. I yeah. did not know that. Yeah. A anyone else we're expecting to be absent tonight? Amy and Jody. Jody. They're waiting on Jessica Wolfgang. and Wolfgang. Yeah. Got a skinny crew tonight. I have enough people yet. I need to. <laughs> I don't get to anything yet. No, not yet. Yeah. We're, we're, lean, we're lean and not so mean. Mm -hmm. Jessica and. There's Jessica. Yeah. Hi. Oh. Hey, Jeff. Hi. Uh, Joe also. Yeah. I haven't heard from him though. Um, I heard from him late afternoon. He was asking for the link for the meeting, which I had sent like about a half hour prior, but I guess he had not seen it. So, okay. Um, Craig, do I have like two minutes? I, I realized I left off my applications and my other. Room. Yeah, go ahead. We're waiting okay. for, you need Wolfgang anyway. Okay. So, okay. Anyway. go ahead. Does anyone else's screen keep freezing or is it just mine? It's just what's, you. What's, what's happening? Yeah. My screen. Freezing. I've been having internet problems and I'm really hoping it resolves. Mm -hmm. All right. If it gets bad, I'll have to get out and go back. Go back. Yeah, you're freezing out. Yeah, now you're, now you're freezing a little bit. How are you, Wolfgang? All right, Craig, how are you? Good.
All right, now I just need Ashley back and then we'll be all set. Oh, and, and Steve. Yeah, we're not Steve. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Okay. In accordance with Section 5 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, be advised that notice of this meeting was made by posting on a bulletin board in town hall, mailing to the officially designated newspapers a list of the meeting dates annually, indicating that this meeting would be taking place on Monday, October 17th at 7 p.m. via Zoom webinar. Steve Togar? Here. Wolfgang Tutoris? Here. Ashley Abingdor? Here. Vice Chairwoman Jessica Glant? Here. Chairman Joseph Steinberg? He's not here, but I am, Craig Cleaver. Oh my God. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> is that, I cannot believe it. I'm so sorry, Craig. <laughs> That's a very so long time. It, it, was, it was a lot of years. It was, it was a lot many of years. years. <laughs> I, I'm so embarrassed. So. Chairman Craig Kleitner. He's here, yes. Thank you. I apologize. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Record okay. Joe is not yet. Yeah. No, um, no. Okay, so there are no minutes to approve this evening. Um, so we'll jump to memorializations. So first up, we have calendar 3882-22, Mark and Lauren Firestein at 2 Joanna Way, Short Hills. Um, who's eligible on this one? Eligible are. Steve, Wolfgang, and Jessica. Okay. Um, so between the three of you, any corrections or changes to that memorialization? If not, can I have one of the three of you make a motion in a second? I move approval of the memorialization for calendar number 3882-22. I'll second that. Steve Toger? Yes. Wolfgang Tutoris? Yes. Jessica Glatt? Yes. Thank you. Next up, we have calendar 3884-22, Ward Myers at 37 Slayton Drive in Short Hills. Who is eligible on that one? Same people. Okay. Uh, any correct changes or corrections to that memorialization? If not, can I have a motion? I'll move approval of calendar 3884-22. A second? Second. Steve Toger? Yes. Wolfgang Tutoris? Yes. Jessica Glad. Yes. Next up, we have calendar 3886-22, Grant and Karen Thorson, 18 Berkeley Road, Milburn. Probably the same crew. Same, same crew, yes. Any corrections or changes to that memorialization? If not, can I have a motion? I'll move approval. And a second? Second. Steve Toger? Yes. Wolfgang Tutoris? Yes. Jessica Glad? Yes. Last up with calendar 3881-22, Jose Landaro at 10 Rawway Road in Melbourne. Same group? Uh, actually, Craig, you were here for this meeting, so you're also eligible. Okay. Any corrections or changes for that uh, memorialization? If not, can I have a motion? I move approval of the memorialization for calendar number 3881-22. Thank you, and a second? Second. Steve Toger? Yes. Wolfgang Tutoris? Yes. Jessica Glatt? Yes. Greg Kleitner? Yes. We'll jump into our first application, um, calendar 3880-22. This is a matter that was continued from the October 3rd uh, meeting, Zoning uh, Board of Adjustment meeting, property location at 17 Haddonfield Road, uh, Imrana Chaudhry. Um, did you need to qualify anyone, Eileen, on that? Or? Um, I brought over the applicant and Maria, who I believe is, I'm assuming it's Maria DeCosimo, their architect. And just for the record, Craig, um, you did watch the YouTube video. Yes, I did. And Ashley, were you able to yes. watch it as well? Okay. Yes. Okay, so once we have them over.
Hello, everyone. Good evening. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you. Uh, my name is My name is Inarana Chaudhary, resident of 17 Hayden Field Road. Um, actually, for today's uh, session, my architect Maria De Casu was going to present me present my matter. Um, Eileen, is she here? Uh, oh. She is here. A but we need her camera and mic on. Yeah, I am here. Okay. Just need your camera on as well. Start video. So Maria is going to present me. Okay, uh, uh, Rob, I assume that everyone is previously sworn. Yeah, but we're going to just confirm that once Maria gets back on. Okay. Why doesn't go up? No, no your video is not up. Oh, there we go. There's a little thing that slides. So. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. How are you guys today? Great. How are you this evening? We're okay. Okay. And uh, uh, yeah. Ms. DeCosimo, you were previously sworn at the last meeting. You understand that you remain under oath, correct? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Mr. Um, and your credentials were previously uh, accepted by this board. So if you would please uh, continue um, with your application. Uh, yes, um, we have uh, taken the project that we presented uh, last before you last time, and uh, we have um, taken the project in and minimized it the best I possibly could um, in hoping that it meets your satisfaction. Um, we have taken the, uh, the left side edition, which is the master suite edition. Uh, and I've moved it in approximately three feet. Um, uh, the roof lines over uh, the mas master over that addition has been reduced um, from um, 17 feet to 13 feet. Um, and um, so now that it, it now it matches the uh, garage side and um, the front yard setback uh, was previously uh, 20 feet, 20.5 feet. It is improved to 18.36 feet. Wait, I'm, um, I'm sorry, Maria, can you please repeat that? Because it seems like you decreased yes. the front yard. You yes, know. I. I'm sorry. I decreased the front yard setback and the side yard setback. The setbacks um, around uh, the the addition. So um, the front yard setback was decreased by uh, a little bit over two feet. I mean, it was. No, 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 no. Right. I think what you mean to say is that you've increased the setback. I'm sorry. Yes, I increased the setback by a little over two feet. Okay, so why don't we just go go back for a second because we heard a lot of testimony the last time. So the master suite, you say, was moved in at the left side three feet. So Correct. So can you just tell us what the dimensions are now in terms of that setback versus what it was previously? Yes, I can. And Did by pulling- you to share the new plans? So we're, yes. what we're looking at and what, by... and what you're saying is the same thing? Yes, and by pulling the uh, side yard setback in, uh, that's how I alleviated the front yard setback by a little over two feet. Okay, well, yeah, we need to be specific as to what the changes are, please. Okay, so um, this side yard setback here. Okay, yeah, wait, hold on a second. You're not sharing the not screen. sharing. How do I share? What, why am I not sharing it? Be a green a green button toward the bottom. I see it. Share screen. Okay. Okay. You should all see my screen now. Uh, not yet. Now we have. There we so, go. Okay. So hold hold on a second. Let's. What are we looking at right now? You're looking at the first floor plan, which um, comprises the left side addition. Okay, ho okay, hold on a second. What is the 
date on this plan? It is dated um, October 1st of this year, 2022. Okay. And, and, and this plan, um, Eileen, is what we have in our packets? Yes. Okay, so why don't you, Maria, tell us if you can, in relation to either this plan or a survey site plan, how you changed the proposed deviations from the last time you were before the board. Okay. Um, by decreasing the size of the master bedroom, I brought the left wall in by three feet. That gave relief to the side yard by three feet. Now, by doing that, because the uh, front okay, yard- Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you need to tell us what the variance is that you are requesting um, on that side, if any. There's no side yard. Set. No, I, I'm not. I'm not. I don't have a side yard violation. Okay. I have okay. a front yard violation because. Right. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So if you. Can look you can you just show, if you just use the screen and the plan yes. that the chairman is referring to, just yes. identify where it is that you move the master suite in by three feet on the left side. Okay, first I'd like to um, just confirm that we're before you for the front yard setback because I, I, I this existing. Okay. Just, just for one, just let's just let's take a step back. First, show the board where you made the revision that you were testifying to regarding the master suite. Okay, so this left side wall with the two windows in the master bedroom, the one that the bed is against, I don't, I'm, I, I'm guessing that you can't see my finger. No, right? no, so, so if you use, use, your, use your mouse, uh, use your mouse to delineate by with a pointer there, what we're talking about. Right. But he's up, here we go. Okay, I'm sorry. There you go. Okay, this wall here, this, this exterior wall, the bedroom size now is uh, a minimal size of, uh, is it 11 by 12, Tony? Do I, can I have the... We reduce the size of the bedroom by pulling this left side wall in, um, from the left, we pulled it in and we gave relief to this side yard setback. The concern was from the board last time that uh, we were too close to the neighbor, even though we were within this side yard setback. They thought that the, uh, the project was too imposing on the neighbor. So what we've done is tried our best to minimize it, still stay functional. Um, we pulled the we pulled the the size of the room in um, by by alleviating it by three feet and by doing that because it's on a curb um, the front yard setback increased by a little over two feet and when looking in the whole massing of it we decreased the roof angles so that the whole massing of the addition. Uh, is less assuming and has less mass. And hoping that, you know, those changes, uh, you know, that you, you would approve of those changes. Um, hey, can, can, but the can most- I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, let's just back up. So in terms of the front yard setback, when you yes. were last before us, I believe, you yes. were asking for an 18.36 foot front yard setback where the minimum front yard setback is 40 feet. Has, that is has correct. That, has, has that request now changed based on the modification you made to the plans? Yes. The uh, front yard setback uh, is now 18, 
is 20.5 feet. So that was increased from 18.36 feet. Correct. And if you look closely, uh, this dashed line um, here, that's the existing front yard setback. Right here. This is the front yard setback. This is this dashed line here is the rear yard setback. And here's my left yard setback. So this home is severely existing non-conforming. The front of the home as it is, um, you know, it's in a huge violation of front yard setback. Just a quick question. Were, were these updated plans distributed? No, I can't find it either. Um, revised plans were sent with the packets. I mean, I, I did receive a, a revised plan, but all I, I received one sheet right. which appears to show the property from various external views. Right. Yes, um, I included that to show you that the impact on the neighbor uh, can be considered minimus because uh, one, in, certain, in, in many respects, one, we're not even reaching the left side yard setback. Um, we've alleviated that. We're so not I received, in violation. I, hang on one second. I've received that also, but I, don't I haven't received any of the other documents. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, they were brought a to revise a, a revision. There were revised plans, architecturals dated October 1st. 1st. Right. Should have gone this, out. I was under the impression they went out with the package. I don't know why you didn't get them. Nobody got them? No. I didn't know. So, so let's, let's step back for one second here. Okay. Right now, the original, if you go on to our website, obviously, in, in Town Hall, the C variance that was initially requested um, was proposed at twenty eight point thirty six. Right. Okay, and now and now where are you going to? And your front yard setback? No, the original. I, I don't believe that's correct. I think the original. Was, I, 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 put your yeah. survey up. We correct the site plan up. 18, Maybe we correct. Uh, I'm just. I'm just. I have the application up in front of me. The, the original attachment E that's currently on the municipal website. We it shows a 28.36 proposed usage. If you scroll back to attachment B, attachment B a few pages ahead uh, has the 18.36 listed on it. So, okay, so that, was that was incorrect. A typo. It's, it's, that was incorrect. Okay, right. I got it. All right. So we're 18.36 originally and and now where are you 20.5 okay 18.36 now we're 20.5 okay perhaps perhaps it's the um existing building as it stood before before we proposed anything the front yard it, it, it said 28.36 okay. yeah it, it became 28.36 so clearly yeah it's just the typo. the typo there <laughs> Let, let's let, let's jump real quick to to your building coverage, okay? So we just so we just so we have our our what you're looking for straight, okay? Your building coverage you originally were proposed at twenty four point eight seven. Where are you now? I'm I'm going down to the chart. Twenty four point one four. Twenty four point one four. Okay, and what does that represent then in square footage? 1,361 square feet. Okay, where um, 1,296, 28 is permitted, correct? Yes. Yes. I, I'm, Craig, can you have her just repeat what the, what the proposed square footage is? Sure, total? your proposed square footage again, could you please uh, repeat that? Yes, absolutely. My proposed square footage is 1,361 square feet. That is 
1.1% over the required or allowed, which is 1,296.28 square feet. Okay, so 65 feet over. 65 Correct. Feet over. Yeah. Okay, great. I just want to first get that all straightened out to see exactly what we're looking at here in deviations. Okay. So, I, once again, sorry for the eruption, but please continue where, where you were and what you're discussing. Um, I, I, I'm just, um, our second time around, um, just, I, I just trying to make you aware that I tried to alter the uh, addition as much as I could um, to minimize the size, um, the square footage um, and the massing and still make it functional. Um, so do you have renderings here of what your new um, elevations look like? Yes, they were they're all included in the set. And I also have that additional sheet that I sent out showing its impact onto its neighbors. That we seem to have, okay, okay. which was the four pictures attached to what looks to be like a colorized survey. But why don't you take us through real quick the elevations, especially on that that side where you pulled back the master bedroom on, because you mentioned also something about the roof line being altered. Yes. And, and what you actually did there. Okay, so here, uh, just going down on the bottom of our first sheet, the zoning sheet. Okay, and, and just, Maria, I'm sorry. When you refer, because we're making a record here, when you refer to the sheets, you need to identify number. them by page number and revision date, please. Okay, so on C1 of one, revision 10 one 2022 um, I just wanted you to be refreshed of what the house looks like now. So there are just two pictures at the bottom, which hopefully you can see on my screen. Um, yeah. And one is a shot of that corner where my new addition on the left-hand side of the home, where the addition um, is being attached. So now I'm going to go to elevations, which Okay, I'm here. Okay, great. Um, tell, us, tell us what you did to minimize some of the massing. Yes, I just want to give you the, sh the sheet number, sir. Sure. On A7 of 8. Um, and that's data 10 one as well? Correct. Okay. The, uh, the two. Okay. Two. This left side has been pulled in by three feet. So if you can imagine, this is two feet. This is approximately two feet. So the first, when we first proposed this project, the addition had come out to where my mouse is sort of floating out here. So we pulled in the, med, the bedroom, the size of the bedroom, we pulled it in so that it is basically at its bare minimum. And then with that, these roof lines have minimized down um, by uh, by almost four feet. Um, when you say minimize, what do you, what do you mean by that? We were following the pitch of this existing roof when I did the first design. We're trying to uh, have it so that when you uh, looked at the the addition, this the the pitch of this of the roof over the addition matched the roof of the existing house. So it was sort of harmonious. What we've done now is negated that concept and sloped the roof at a much lower angle to uh, get the rise or the ridge 
at a lesser height. And what it hopefully what it does is it matches the other side, matches the, the side over the garage. So we've decreased the mass as a totality, not only in, but we've decreased the height of it. Okay. Let's talk about the third variance that you're looking for last time, which was the parking. Now, what have you done with that? We've given up. We've let we've let it go. Okay, so that that will be removed, no longer needed in this application, correct? That is correct. Okay. Anything further? Uh, no, I, but I really yes. What I'd like to do is I I just would like to. Uh, bring your attention to sheet. Sorry, you didn't receive the packet because um, we, well, the drawings are, try to be very clear on our drawings. Um, just, so the, uh, so now I want the view. Actually, could you, could you go up so, a little bit, please, again? Did you go up to your render? You're, you're right there, that. Okay, so originally you wrote it as 10 feet and now you're showing it as 12 feet there. You mentioned you were bringing it in three feet. So is it, that looks like two feet. Okay, so it's, Tony, get rid of this. How, how did that come up? <laughs> Sorry. Um, the, the side yard setback is on an angle. Okay. I, I'm just so trying to get you, the record straight for, as, as Mr. Simon said, we're trying to build a proper story here, so to speak. And like I said, you mentioned it was 13 feet and it's showing 12. Okay. So what happens is when I brought the left side wall in by three feet, it impacted, it positively impacted the side yard setback and the front yard setback. Okay. Um, so as you pull this in three feet, it alleviated the side yard setback here, but the side yard setback oh, is I'm not- Oh, I'm sorry. You're, you're, that's a side yard setback line. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's not the distance to the house. It's so tiny here. I'm just trying to see what that is. Okay. Never mind. I, I read you loud and clear. Oh, so anyway, um, uh, I would like to uh, bring your attention to- um, Tom, to uh, the uh, the addendum sheet that you re you did receive of the um, of this the, the this is the pictures you're referring to um, the sheet with the four pictures that I'm holding up right now on my screen, but right. Okay. So uh, you know, on a typical street where all the front home fronts are lined up, the side yard setbacks have different impact. Um, here we have a curving street. So the side yard setback sort of becomes a pie. Um, so we have, we have pulled this back, we have pulled this back a bit. So it is not even, we, you know, we're not up to our side yet setback and we've decreased the mass. And, um, the the home adjacent um, to the subject property is uh, on the on the right hand side is a one story two car attached garage. So basically, unless they spend a lot of time in their garage, what we're doing here really is not impacting them as much as if this was a living space. Um, and my triangles one, two, three, and four are uh, reflected as view one, view two, view three, and view four. And, um, you know, you could see that the, the, at no point do you see the two houses virtually on top of each other. Because of the pie, they, they really do get that uh, angle of separation. And there is a lot of vegetation. 
So, um, you know, I hope, I, I really do hope you could look upon this favorably. We've tried, we've tried our hardest. Okay. Um, any questions from board members? I have a question. Sure. Do, do I see Maria? Do I see correctly also that the the proposed driveway has been reduced as well? The driveway has only be, been reduced because we took away what the little extra that we asked for. The driveway right. is existing untouched. Okay, understood. Thank you. Existing to remain. Yep. Got it. Any other questions from board members? You can finish, you can uh, stop sharing your screen at this point. Okay. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, stop sharing. I got it. Okay. Go ahead, Rob. Maria, I believe yes. You, yes. You, test, you, you testified earlier that the deviation on building it's on on building coverage is 65 square feet correct right is there anything that can be practically done because it's such a, a small amount to eliminate that variance uh, i have to tell you something this bedroom is less than, less, is basically 11 by 11. I mean, she only has room to go around her bed and that's it. I've taken out her dressing. I, I mean, there's, there's just, I mean, this is a home in Short Hills. I mean, this is not just an, at some point, you know, things, I, I, I'm not sure where you, I, I could possibly take more square footage. This is a small house. Okay. It's a small house. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from board members? I see none, so I will open up to questions from the uh, audience. Anyone in the audience have a question for either the applicant or her professional? I see none. Um, next, I will go to uh, comments from the audience. Anyone in the audience have a comment regarding this case? I see no hands raised, so I'll close the public portion of this application. So board members, what say you regarding this? I'll go first. Sure. Um, no, I think they've made a lot of efforts to to reduce the massing of the proposed addition. And uh, I appreciate the extent that they've gone to do that. And I personally can support this application. Thank you, Wolfgang. Uh, any further comment? I think that I could support the application as well. Um, I, I do think that the applicant went to um, great lengths to um, try to satisfy um, and alleviate a bunch of the concerns that we had um, as board members. So, anything further from anyone else? I basically echo what Wolfgang and Jessica said, especially with regard to the massing. I think that changing the angle of the roof line really helped there. So, um Unfortunately, I'm, I'm going to disagree with my fellow board members. I revisited the property this weekend just to be sure. And uh, although I do appreciate the efforts made by the architect and the applicant to address our concerns, I don't, in, in my view, the uh, changes made did not sufficiently address those. So I will not support the application. Thank you, Steve. Um, uh, you know, I, um, you know, we're dealing with a, as noted, as a smaller home here. And to achieve a, a bedroom on the first floor, and and seems to be what seems to be very modest in size. I think it's been done with the most care you could possibly do, and le the least amount of impact. Um, so there is a slight reduction in massing, obviously, from the application prior. So I, I think I would uh, 
be okay to support this. So do I have a motion in this case? I'll move approval. Do I have a second? I'll, I'll second. second. Steve Tober? No. Wolfgang Torres? Yes. Ashley Abigdor? Yes. Jessica Blatt? Yes. Greg Plaitner? Yes. Good luck with the project. Thank you so much. Sure. Have a good evening. You too. Joe, I see you came in late on that one, so obviously you were not eligible to vote. But, yes. So yes. Okay, so yes. obviously going forward, you're good to go, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, next up, we have uh, calendar 38, 28, 22, 39 Stewart Road um, in Short Hills. Good evening, folks. How are you? Hello. How are you? Well, how are you? Good, Jonathan. So, uh, who would like to start off this evening? Um, I guess I'll start us off, and I'll kick it over to uh, John James to walk you through the application. Just wanted to, you know, put a you know, face to, to this project. My name is Jonathan Wilf. I'm the um, managing member. Of, oh, wait, wait, excuse uh, me. You know, that's excuse me. That's oh, sorry, there. sorry, jumped, why, jumped way too far ahead. Why don't you both uh, raise your right hand? We'll do you both at the same time. Do you swear? Why, why, why don't we, wait, wait, Eric? Yeah. Oh, let's, three. Let's get, let's get sorry. all three. Sorry, Rich, um, I didn't see you there. Rich, Rich, have it right hand. Thank you. And is, um, is Brian Hirsch here as well? He's our landscape architect. He, he may be asked some questions, so I would like him to be in, um, sworn in if possible. Okay. He's on the way. Thank you. Okay, if everybody would just raise their right hand, please. Do you swear from the testimony about to give in today's proceeding to be the truth, the whole truth, none but the truth? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm just going to need everyone to uh, state their name on the record, please. Jonathan Wilf. John James, architect. Rich Keller, engineer and planner. Brian Hirsch, landscape architect. Okay, thank you all. Jonathan, please continue. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so I'm the um, managing member and owner of 39 Stewart Road, LLC. Um, I purchased this property several years ago. Um, as everyone knows, I, I think everyone knows is it's the picture on the historic board website. Um, um, this is a historic home. Um, we strive to maintain the character of the property and, and do the best that we can with it. We've done several different projects in town with historic homes and we care deeply about, you know, all the tradition that comes with owning one of these houses and then we try our best to, to maintain that. Obviously, things come up when you're dealing with a house of this age. Um, properties have been divided over the years that are somewhat unusual at times. Um, the main issue that we're having at this time that we're in front of you all tonight for is the fact that this house currently exists. I think 95% of the house is in the rear yard setback. Um, so it is a, a, a existing non-conforming um, situation. Um, and uh, we are looking for, um, a, um, for rear yard unoccupied and rear yard setback variances to add a terrace off of the first floor in the rear of the house. Um, and just uh, as a word, because I, I you know, we, we've gotten some questions from neighbors and I've always been very friendly with our neighbors and trying to make everything above board. Um, on the plans that have been distributed, did we show a retaining wall um, and, um, and a steep slope disturbance that would exceed um, a thousand uh, square feet, which is what the, what the rules are set for currently. We are not here tonight asking for any kind of steep slope variance. We have been led to believe that sometime in the next several years that rule may change and we may be compliant as of right, um, as we don't need to do anything with walls or steep slopes anytime um, in the near future. We figure we can just wait and see how it goes. But if at some point when you're ready to undertake that project, we need to, we'll obviously come back in front of this board. We put it on this plan because we want it to be fully upfront with everybody. So every person who um, wanted to have a question about this project, who 
want to know what was going on that we are being forthright and um, can come and, and talk about it uh, as early as possible. Um, but um, with, uh, with that being said, I want to pass it to John James to walk us through the application in more specific detail. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Rob. So, and, and maybe Jonathan, this is probably a question for both John and Rich, John James and Rich, just to confirm that if the steep slope disturbance request and accompanying retaining wall request is withdrawn from the project for purposes of both your plot plan as well as any relief that you um, are seeking from the board, whether that impacts the balance of the relief that you're seeking tonight, either by way of your plans or by the variance requests themselves. Um, I, I can answer that and I apologize. I should have brought that up um, earlier. They are totally not related to one another. That is uh, a further project down the line. What we're asking for tonight and the project to company with it can be fully accomplished without disturbing any steep slopes at any point in the future. So I think that's what you're asking. I am. And also there's no, any approvals that are sought by the applicant tonight um, do not impact or require the need for any retaining wall construction as originally proposed, correct? Correct. Okay. And, um, and and Rich and John, I know we haven't even gotten you qualified yet. Do you guys both concur with uh, the applicant's representation in that regard so we can move forward? Yes, I do. They're, they are not related. We can certainly build out the terrace uh, without the need for a steep slope deviation, steep slope disturbance. Yes, and John? I agree. Okay, I just wanted to Clear that for the record, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, who's gonna take it from here? Um, I think I'm gonna start next. Um, I'd like to share my screen. John, why don't we just uh, qualify you first, please? Sure. Go ahead. Who credentials, please? <laughs> why not, why not, why yeah. I'd love to, but no. Yeah, so sorry. I'm hey, a... hey, 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 Craig, can you vlog the other witness, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm an architect principal and a um, eight person architectural and interior design firm specializing in historic preservation work. Um, I've registered in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. All my registrations are current and active. I have a Master of Architecture degree from Columbia University in New York City. I've been a practicing architect for over 40 years. I've had my practice out here over 30 years, and uh, I've presented before this board on numerous occasions. Thank you very much, Sean. Um, please continue. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and show you our project here. Um, without trying to steal any of Rich's thunder later on, I'm gonna start with his site plan. Um, 39 Stewart, it's a designated property in the Short Hills Park Historic District. It's on a 1.2 acre lot. It's over 50,000 square feet. It's only a 4,562 square foot house. It was built in the early 1900s um, in a colonial revival or neoclassical style. Um, it was originally a barn for the adjacent residents below next door. And that probably explains why it was originally set so far back from the main street at the back of the property. Um, it's currently, and it was an early example of, um, you know, an adaptive reuse from a stable to a residence. It's set back though, 294 feet from the front lot line where 40 feet is required. And so the current location is completely non-conforming. And you can see Rich's rear yard setback line here, and it runs through uh, a minimal corner of the house, maybe two to five square feet of it within the setbacks. And the rest of the existing house is totally non-conforming. So being so far away and outside the envelope, there's nothing that we can do or touch this house 
um, without coming before the board for some type of variance with the rear yard because the full house is within the rear yard property setback itself. Um, the one thing I do want to say is that the proposal that we're showing you here tonight is something that we um, showed to the historic preservation um, on July of this year, and it was unanimously approved by that board. Um, just for the information of everyone on the board, there were previous historic preservation as well as zoning board approvals for this property. Um, back in 2020, we came before both boards and received approval for entry gates, gate posts, and landscaping on the property. Um, what we're going to show you tonight are really improvements to the house itself. Um, we're not changing any of the front three facades of the house, and we're simply adding a, um, we're changing windows and doors on the back of the house. We're adding two dormers on the roof, um, and we're building a new bluestone terrace over top of an existing patio. So it creates a first floor terrace for the property, and it creates a covered porch at the basement level. All of this work is really adjacent to the back of the house, and it doesn't affect any of the um, steep slopes, which is further back on the property there. Um, I want to... Um, hey, hey, John, it may be helpful yeah. if you zoom in on yes, Rich's um, plan, just so that the board and the public have a better view of what you're proposing. Yes, thank you. Can you see here, this shows the setback line and it shows the house here. And here in a stone color is the outline of the existing terrace. I'm gonna show you block, blow up architectural plans of this, but I think to see where it lies on the property and how far it is from the front yard, it just explains um, why we have to be here for a variance since the house is entirely um, in the rear yard, except for this corner right here of a couple of square feet. Um, just want to show you quickly some photographs of I'm not sure why we lost that. And and John, anything that you are showing the board and the public, um, either should have been submitted already with the application and if it's not if you can just identify as such yes it was can mark yeah the john try zooming out there we go thank you jonathan so here we are um okay so all, all, all these all these photographs are part of the application submission yes these okay, photographs were all, they're all numbered, 39 Stewart LLC, one through, um, showing the entry to the property from the front yard, showing the new driveway going down to the main house. This is the picture of the house that Jonathan was talking about on the HPC brochure. Um, you can see here is the uh, rear yard of the house with the existing patio here. And this is where we're proposing to put a new terrace up on the first floor of the house. This is the basement level down here. The property slopes from two story at the front of the house to being three stories at the back of the house. So we're proposing a terrace at this line here along the first floor level. Um, you can see from the side yard, the, it's fairly level coming out, and then the steep slopes take over from here going down in the backyard. You can see here kind of behind where I'm standing. The new terrace will come out approximately um, four feet past where this existing patio is currently. Um, here you can see the kitchen wing. There's an existing deck here that's going to be removed. So while we're adding a terrace in the middle of the back, we're removing a deck off the back of the kitchen area, uh, which just reduces some of the coverage in that area. Um, this is a picture showing where the slopes are going down and some of the trees that have already been planted on the property. Um, this is just a blow up of that patio area again. Um, this is a view from the corner of the property looking at the side. This is a unique house in that it's angled 
So it almost presents three different facades on the back. And then this shows you again, the slope going back up to the front yard that occurs on the sides of the house. If I go back and- Hey, 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 hey John, before you, before you leave these photographs, can you, um, if you can, based on the photographs that you've uh, shown, um, show the board and the public where these new dormers are proposed? Yes, the new, where this existing dormer is here, we're proposing to widen that dormer on this side of the house. And there's another dormer on the opposite side as well. Okay, you're refer and, and you're referring to photograph number eight, correct? Eight, that's correct. Thank you. I don't think you can see the dormers in any of the other views of the house from down in the backyard. Um, it will be on my architectural elevations, though. So the variances that we're um, asking for are, are really three, and two of them are really a duplicate. The first variance is for year, rear yard unoccupied. Existing is 15.1%. We're reducing that to 12%, um, where 25% is required. Um, the second variance is... Um, the same as the first, it's rear yard unoccupied for accessory use. Accessory use and building is the exact same. So they're kind of duplicate um, um, variances, but we've named them both, which is, is the same. The coverage is still 15.1% um, proposed as 12% uh, where 25% is required. And then the other variance that we're asking for is rear yard setback so that you can see from the site plan here. Um, we're asking for the setback for the terrace here. So the setback that we need is 16.78 feet because there's a certain part of the rear yard setback where the property is not uniform going back. It has this deviation where it comes closer to the house. So the current setback at that point is 34.32 feet. And we're asking for that to be 16.78 feet. Um, I would like to say though, that where the terrace is here, the dimension out to the primary part of the backyard is still um, 38.76 feet where it hits 16.78 at this point of the back part of the property. Rich is going to talk more about that in terms of the overall site plan and coverage and adjacent neighbors. Um, so if I go to our plans here, we're kind of maintaining, um, really we're trying to take this back to a little bit more of a barn and open feeling in the house. So we're going to have a front entry, living room, dining room, mudroom, kitchen on the right. We have a studio over here on the left. Up on the second floor, we have a, um, an owner's suite here, uh, bathroom, some open space down to the living room below, and also open space so the skylights above come down into the studio. Down on the basement level, we have another master suite and a family room here with stairs coming down that opens under a covered porch under the terrace. Um, you'll notice from the plans that there is no change in footprint to the existing house. We're maintaining all of that. We're adding the terrace right here in the middle. It extends 15 feet off the side of the house here at the two angles and it extends straight back 20 feet in the middle and has symmetrical staircases going down the back. Um, over here where the kitchen is, there was a larger wood deck that's not in great shape. We're gonna take that off and simply have access down to the yard here from the first floor. Um, when we look at the elevation, this is the new elevation for the back of the house. Um, let me show you the old elevation here. This shows you the existing elevation for the back of the house. So we're adding a few more windows and doors here in the middle, and we're widening these dormers to make them more symmetrical on the back. Um, here it is here. So you can see this is the new terrace here that's supported by columns. It creates a covered porch for the family room down below, and it creates a terrace up here that can be accessed from the living room 
and these two side access doors here so that there's a first floor outdoor space. You can see here, we have a dormer here, slightly enlarged on the left, and a slightly in dorm enlarged dormer here on the right that bring light down. This brings light down into the studio, and this brings light into the uh, bedroom suite up on that level. Um, the, um, I went over the variances that we talked about. Um, I mean, I think in summary, um, we have an existing non-conforming location for this house. You can see here it is here with the terrace on the back. The depth of the terrace going off of here is not dissimilar from what the line is of the existing kitchen area as it extends out. So it's another one of those kind of, um, this is a one and a half story. Ours is really one story. It's a new bluestone terrace um, put on a concrete slab. Uh, with a steel structure below. Um, it will have railings that match the existing detailed railings from the front of the house. So this is matching the character of the front on it. Um, really, there's nothing that we can do in terms of touching this house that, that behind it or anywhere on it since it's already within the rear yard setback that doesn't require a variance from this board. Um, I think it would be a huge improvement for this family um, and their use of the property. It's very well spaced from all of the neighbors. It's very private. And we've already started um, screening on the property with heavy landscaping that um, um, gives them privacy as well as their neighbors. Um, the footprint is remaining the same and the additions are really for the terrace right here. Our building coverages and our lock coverages for the overall site are very, very minimal. We're at 9.2 versus 13% in building coverage. We're at 25.75 versus 35% for lock coverage. Um, and we received a unanimous approval from the HPC for this work. So it certainly fits within the character of the neighborhood. Um, so I think I'm gonna ask if there are any questions from um, board members or the audience. Uh, we'll take, yeah, any questions for, I can, can you stop sharing your screen, screen John. Okay. Anyone on the board have any questions? From the audience? Anyone in the audience have any questions for Mr. James on this application? Uh, wait, let's see one. Uh, let's see here. I believe it's Matthew Rosenbaum has a question. Okay, bring him over. No, Eileen, you're muted. Put him over and then he went back. Oh. Now he's here. Okay. Mr. Rosemount, if you could turn on your camera and unmute yourself, please. Good evening. How are you? Good. Thank you for hearing me. Sure. Just uh, why don't you give us your address? Uh, my name is Matthew Rosenbaum. And my wife, Melanie Rosenbaum, is in the room. And we live at 18 Marine Place, uh, which is block 2202. And we're lot number six. We're directly behind uh, the house in question. Okay. Uh, few, what, what question do you have for Mr. James at this point? Uh, I had a few questions, and maybe it includes Rich. Uh, the calculations for the coverage, does that include the walkway and the circular patio work that they're not proposing to do currently. 
I'm going to let Rich talk about all of this because he's going to pull up his plan and go over all the calculations with you, Matt. Okay. Uh, I also had some other questions sure. in regard to, I would assume that the dialogue in regard to the architecture component is not in question, the dormers as such, because you're only asking for the coverage for the patio. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Because um, I had some questions about that, but I won't do that. And then I had some questions about how you calculated or how you determined the size of the terrace, because uh, it seemed like 1,100 square feet seemed quite large for the area, as well as doubling the space on the patio. Although I do like the way you created the architecture. It does look nice. So I'll give props to you for that. <laughs> um, we were just obviously with where our house directly behind them. Excuse so me. We um, hey, hey Joe. Joe, can you mute yourself? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Because I, I think that I'm getting some no, feedback not. from you. Mr. Rosenbaum, not you. Joe Steinberg, if you can mute yourself. I am sorry. I'll try to do it. Bottom left. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Rosenbaum. Um, I, I said um, I can appreciate the existing nonconformity component of the house and the patio and terrace work. And I will say that uh, Jonathan's been super gracious and nice with all the work he's done. So um, we are generally in favor of the application we're just questioning the size of the patio and the terrace as we our backyard abuts against his and um, all the work for his proposed property is i would probably say the most visible from our property so we are questioning about the size of the terrace that they're proposing on both levels and you know obviously 1100 square feet could occupy quite a number of people it's large events or such so as far as activities noise i don't know what their proposed plan was for the home and for such a large i want to call patio or slash entertaining space well we designed a 20 by 20 patio directly behind the existing living room so they kind of um um mirrored that on the back of the house which is over where the current patio is. And then we wanted to angle it to have a little bit more of a connection um, kind of towards the dining room or the studio because it just looked very awkward being a square in the back. So you have about 300 square feet in one angle, maybe 300 square feet in the other angle, 400 square feet in the middle. It's still smaller than what would be a small pool in your backyard with any kind of terrace around it or any other type of thing. This is really the only amenity that we're having back there off of the house to be able to be outside um, with family and entertaining. So um, it's certainly not out of scale with the size of the house or with the length of the house. And the fact that it's segmented into three pieces also makes it look much, much smaller. Um, the reason that we did show retaining walls and landscaping as a part of our presentation to Historic because they're interested in that as well. And the same thing with the zoning board is that we are intending to um, screen this. And some trees have already been planted. Um, we have our landscape architect here with um, his planting plan. Um, you know, we're, we're going to continue to screen the back of the property um, the way we've done it on the sides in the front of the property. And um, I think Jonathan should be applauded for the um, level of landscaping that he's brought to this property and improving it. Okay, I can uh, defer my landscape questions to him. Um, and then you did talk about some other aspects of it. Is there any anticipated plans for an awning at the upper level of the terrace or... Uh, some sort of shading or anything of that nature, um, speakers or any of that stuff? We're not planning an awning right now. That doesn't mean that we couldn't have an umbrella or something like that, but the answer to the awning is no. We would have shown that as part of the architecture. And obviously historic preservation would have wanted to have seen that. So anything that we add or fix to the back of the house, we'd have to go back to them if we wanted to, but there is no plan for that. Okay, and then the underside is, 
Is that enclosed with any screens and stuff like that, or is it an open air terrace? That's an open air terrace. Okay. Um, and just and just adding on to what John said, um, Matthew, we we do expect to continue screening. So I do think there is a mutual need for privacy between the two properties, and we're going to uh, do the best that we can um, uh, to, to further that. No, and I think you've done everything you can. Unfortunately, just because of the grade, I think the elevation change between your property and my properties, every bit of, I think, from the basement floor, 20-something feet, and then from the terrace, it's over 30-something feet, which would be very difficult to screen from the lower level. And I did have some concerns about the retaining walls, but again, since you're not proposing them, they're not in question at the moment. I, I also would like to say that relative to the height of the house, that simply by adding a terrace at the first floor level, it cuts the view of the house down to a two-story two house. So you're really seeing the first and second floor above the terrace level, and the screening down below will pretty much take out the basement level. Um, you know, we, we're, this is the hand we were dealt. We have a backyard that slopes down at least 12 feet, totally exposes the basement at that area. But I think putting a horizontal terrace across a portion of the yard brings the top portion of the house into a much better proportion of terrace to house, um, creates covered porch underneath and kind of does both things at the same time. So in a way, it really does break down the scale of the mass as opposed to making it look larger. I actually agree with you. I think you did a great job with that. Uh, the only thing I would love to see, but again, I'm not, I don't know if it's open for discussion, is the, the dormers you talked about creating a beautiful symmetrical setup. It would seem odd to me that the studio would have two windows, a smaller window underneath a much larger dormer. And on the opposite side, you have a bigger base window on the first floor and a smaller windows on the dormer. It would be nicer to see either a larger window on the studio or maybe smaller dormer above the studio just to kind of create a little bit more of a symmetrical nature. That's my free architectural opinion on that. But I think overall, the patio is very pretty and I think it adds to the house. So I'm okay with that. All right, Mr. Rosebaum, we'll bring you back over when it comes time for questioning you. of Mr. Keller, okay? Thank you. Um, is that where we're headed, Jonathan? Going to Richard next? Yes. So, okay, John, you're finished? Okay. I am. All right, uh, Rich, why don't you give us your, uh, your qualifications and um, we'll see if we accept them. Hopefully. Good yeah. evening. Um, Rich Keller, I'm an engineer and planner for the applicant. I'm a principal in the firm of Casey and Keller located here in Melbourne. I have been, I'm a licensed uh, engineer uh, in the state of New Jersey with a um, degree from Rutgers University with a declared concentration of water resources and environmental engineering. And I also hold a master's degree in architecture from the New Jersey Institute of Technology uh, with a declared concentration in urban planning and design. I also taught in both the graduate and undergraduate departments at NJIT School of Architecture and Planning for approximately 11 years. I have, uh, I have been a consulting planner to um, the borough of Caldwell, as well as uh, South Orange. And I have been the uh, board of adjustment and planning board engineer for Long Hill Township for approximately three years. I just gave that up because we're too busy. Um, I've appeared before this board, the planning board, and approximately 110 boards throughout the state of New Jersey, and my licenses are still in good effect. Thank you very much. Your qualifications are accepted. Please proceed. And, and wait, just Mr. Keller, you're going to be presenting uh, as an expert architect, I'm sorry, engineering and planning witness, correct? That's that is correct. Thank you. Thanks, go ahead. Thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and bring up uh, an exhibit. Share screen. Okay, this is an exhibit labeled Neighborhood Exhibit. Will Presidents 39 Stewart Road, Township of Milburn, and actually uh, technically it should say 39 Stewart LLC. Uh, the drawing date is October 15th, 2022. And the, the underlying uh, aerial photo was captured on March 11th of 2022. This was prepared by my office. It has the tax maps as well as uh, part of our survey superimposed on top of it, as well as the additions. Um, and I think in some ways it's a little easier to read than the, uh, than the grading plan, which was really only presented when we uh, 
wanted to let the HPC understand um, the totality of the application or if there may be a wall. Um, since we pulled that wall, uh, that drawing is probably less uh, apropos. I'm happy to talk about it, but I thought this drawing would be uh, a little more easy to uh, to walk around the site. Okay, Rich, um, hold on, hold on. Yes. Um, why don't we, uh, I assume this is not part of the application materials. No, this right? would be A1. Right. So we're going to mark this neighborhood exhibit dated October 15th, 2022 as A1 for identification. Go ahead. Correct. As you can see, this property is on the um, westerly side of Stewart Road. It's about uh, 300 feet south of the intersection of Stewart and Minnesink. <laughs> It is a 50,578 square foot lot uh, in the R3 zone where 29,000 square foot lots are required. So it's about um, 1.75 times the, um, uh, the required lot area uh, coming in at 1.16 acres. It is irregularly shaped um, as was indicated by, um, by John, the, this was originally the barn slash um, uh, garage for the property next door at 2025 Stewart, which is currently un going under significant renovations and, uh, uh, and expansions. The, um, the lot is irregularly shaped. The R3 zone does require 115 feet of lot width measured at the 40 foot setback. Um, and they require 175 foot deep lots. Um, this property is actually only 105 feet um, at the setback, at the 40 foot setback and it is about 390 feet deep. Um, so the, uh, I think when you come back to, uh, it's 101 feet wide at, at the street and actually where it starts to open up, it's still only 109 feet. So it, it technically would be considered a flag lot um, that was created to give enough room to the, the original house at 25 Stewart and then open up into a buildable air or, or a usable area of the property as you got behind 25 Stewart. But the result is that it's an irregular shape lot um, where the uh, as the property opens up in the back, um, you finally get to be something that actually exceeds the minimum requirement. The setbacks in the zone are based upon the average setback within 500 feet to the nearest intersections. Um, that means we have a front yard setback requirement of 78.5 feet. And based upon that 390 foot depth, our minimum rear yard uh, requirement is 78.15. So the blue line is the side front and rear yard setback. And as J John indicated, um, the entire house, with the exception of four square feet, John's pretty good at that. He said between three and five. So I think it's a pretty good guesstimate. Um, four square feet of the house actually sits in the building envelope. The rest of the entire home sits, sits behind it um, and is uh, at its closest 34.32 feet to that little uh, jut out on the um, on the adjoining property. Uh, sorry about that. And um, 58.89 feet from the house to the uh, common property line uh, with Mr. Rosenberg. Um, the, uh, let me just zoom up a little bit here. Um, Accordingly, obviously the requirement for rear guard unoccupied, and we don't actually need two variants, it's one variance. It's, it's, it's agnostic as to whether it's covered with accessory structures or walks or pavement or whatever. Um, you take the entire, you take the rear yard area and you subtract out any paved areas, patios, et cetera, and you're required to retain at least 25% of the total lot area has to be behind the house and unoccupied. So for this, this lot, that represents, I think 12,000, we require to have 12,645 square feet behind the house. Um, and obviously we have nowhere near that. We have something uh, akin to existing. We have about 7,600 square feet behind the house. And in the proposed addition, when we add the terrace on, which technically becomes part of the building, so it becomes building coverage, um, it sits over the existing patio, so that is no longer counted as patio because it's subsumed by the building coverage. But obviously, we have a smaller rear yard. So while our accessory structures uh, decrease with the addition of the terrace, uh, technically, we lose some rear yard area because instead of the rear yard running along the face of the existing house, it now runs along the face of the terrace. So 
it's a technical variance that's being created where we're actually reducing the rear yard area through the addition and it creates the need for a variance for that rear yard unoccupied. And as John also said, we're required to have, let me just get this right. We're required to have 78.15 uh, feet um, rear yard. We go from 34.32 down to 16.78 at that closest corner. And the main part um, uh, closest to Matthews, uh, the adjoining owners, um, it goes from uh, 58.8 now down to 38.76. And at its closest, it's 35.84 feet. I would point out that um, in the neighborhood, um, this lot six, number 18, is uh, Matthew Rosenberg's um, uh, property. That is uh, the distance from the closest part of his house to the closest part of the new terrace is 185 feet. The closest distance from 14 Moraine Place, uh, the house immediately to the right of um, Matthew's house is actually just over 200 feet to the terrace. And the property of 40 Minisink is also 200 feet from the back of that house to the closest part of the terrace, even though it's kind of obliterated. So we're more, we're 185 to 200 feet away from the nearest neighbors. There is a change in grade. Um, when they built this, they uh, put the, the stable carriage house barn at the back of the property, probably bull bulldozed in the last flat area and created a very steep drop off into the rear. So we do sit um, like probably 20 feet above Mr. Rosenberg's property but we are 185 feet away. And at this point, we're not uh, looking to change any of the grades. To clarify something um, uh, Matthew asked, um, I took off the retaining wall on this, on, this, uh, on this diagram. I am showing for the purposes of coverage, I am showing um, some walks through the property. Uh, they technically would involve about 560 to 650 square feet of steep to slope disturbance, which is permitted. So I wouldn't need a variance for that. So to clarify, um, anything we're looking to do would not need a variance for steep slopes, and we are not proposing the wall at this time. Um, this this uh, walk does not need variance relief. It may it may change somewhat, but since we do, would like to have some form of path through the property um, mixed amongst the landscaping we're proposing down there, I did leave it on the drawing, and it is calculated in our calculation for rear yard unoccupied. The um, um, Rich, just just. Uh, as a form of housekeeping, just two things. Number one, if you can provide to um, me and Tylene uh, a copy of A1, uh, regardless of the disposition of this matter. And also, um, are you willing to, um, as a condition of approval, if it came up, to revise your plan to eliminate the references to the steep slope disturbance and the retaining wall, since that's not being requested by the applicant. Yeah, absolutely. We obviously wouldn't get building permits if I left them on my drawings, but that was our intent was to delete those. Okay, thank you. So the um, the um, obviously what what was um, I think critical from an architectural perspective is we have this great lawn, uh, this this long driveway that comes up uh, into a very symmetrical home. Um, that sits at the back of the property. And with the lower level, there was really no good connection from the primary living floor to the rear yard. Um, you can go down some stairs through the family room and out, um, but on a house of this size and a, on a house of this, um, actually the house is not large for this property, but uh, for a house of this size, it's unusual to not take advantage of some connection to the outside in which you can then go on outside stairs down to the rear yard and to the lower patio. I think the uh, the solution was quite attractive, as, as indicated. A lot of it was driven not so much that we needed uh, 10,064 to 1,100 square feet of of outdoor terrace, but it just made sense from a planning uh, from a an architectural perspective to not have one square sticking off the back of the property. Um, so really, a lot of the goal is of this is to create a a real feasible connection to the ground plane uh, from the house from the first floor, um, as indicated. By John, we need uh, two variances. I won't go over the exact numbers, but one is for rear yard unoccupied, uh, where 25% is required. So I'm going to go over the numbers. Um, we go from 12% uh, uh, from 15% down to 12%. 
again, it's really a technical variance. We are really just making the backyard slightly smaller through the addition of that terrace. And then the rear yard setback, obviously um, some 78.15 feet is required. We are looking to go from uh, the least dimension of 34.32 down to 16.78. So that's the only variance relief required. We don't need any variances for FAR. We don't need variances for coverage. We're actually well under those metrics. And I'll talk about that in the negative, in the positive and negative criteria. Um, but uh, clearly uh, there's the dormers don't represent uh, a height deviation. Um, the only variances we need are necessitated by the unusual placement of this property at the very rear of the property outside the buildable envelope. The, um, we think that these variances can uh, both be approved under C1 of municipal land use law at 4055D70C1. And that's applicable where the location of the lawfully existing structures on the property results in a practical difficulty in adding any um, additions to the rear of the house or any additional patios without the need for variance relief. Um, I would point out if this house was not all the way up at the front setback, but if it was just 65 feet closer to Stewart Road, um, it would still be 235 feet back from Stewart Road, but all of the variances would completely go away. So again, if we had a more traditional location or even a, a less atypical, maybe not more traditional up at the front, but a less atypical in that it sat in the fattest part of the building envelope, we would not need this variance relief. The, um, there is no, uh, obviously the locations of the lawfully existing uh, dwelling creates the hardship. Uh, with regard to the negative criteria, which always is in two prongs, the first is that there's no substantial detriment to the public good. And then secondly, that there's no substantial impairment to the intent and purpose of the zone plan and zoning ordinance. Um, by allowing the applicant uh, to bring this home up to current standards and to allow for much needed connection to the main, from the main living space uh, to, the, uh, to the rear yard is a benefit uh, to this home, which is a contributing factor to the historic district and therefore is a benefit to the community. There is no detriment to the public good. The most effective would be Matthew. Um, however, um, the project cannot be seen from the street. It was important HPC that the addition be um, not to the side, not visible from the street. It's directly behind the home on that center axis. Um, the existing and proposed landscaping limits any visibility uh, or limits the visibility from the homes to the rear. I can see that on the, on the Rosenbaum property and the area surrounding properties, uh, Jonathan uh, has already planted, with their permission, a series of tall evergreen trees. Um, I think there's at least seven we had indicated. One, two, three, four, five. There's, I thought the landscape architect said there's approximately seven, but that landscaping um, actually went on the neighbor's property and they were significantly mature trees. And there is a plan uh, to, to put additional uh, tall landscaping uh, on the property between the terrace and the rear property line. Uh, as indicated, we're 185 feet away from the closest part of the terrace. And again, it's not a two stories, it's not an enclosed structure. So there's not uh, a roof another 12 feet above this or a, a, an under floor 12 feet above this with, a, with an attic space. Um, as shown on John's plan, plans, it has a, lot, a very light, area and open feeling because it's just a terrace. Uh, there are no walls and there are no plans for any uh, walls or canopies or um, you know, mechanized umbrella canopies, et cetera, all of which as indicated, we'd have to go back to the board, uh, to the HPC if we decided to do that, but it's frankly just not part of the plan. The, um, as indicated, we're way under unlock coverage at 25.75 where, let me go back to the full drawing, um, where 35% is permitted. There is no increase in FAR. We're way under on building coverage. So even though that, that uh, 1040 to 1100 square foot um, patio gets added on, it's council's building coverage. We're still that at 9.21% where 13% is permitted and we're way under on accessory coverage. Technically our accessory coverage goes down because it's covered by building. Um, the, uh, and as indicated by being uh, open, it's really less impactful to the neighbors. We also think there's no detriment to the master plan under the 2018 uh, re-examination on 43, looking at the goals and objectives. Uh, are to encourage appropriate land uses to promote the character of the township as a small suburb of the highest quality. An objective is to protect the character of existing residential neighborhoods and encourage land use and development at appropriate scale and density. Um, we think that this, uh, I think my professional opinion, 
is that we need we meet the proofs for the C1 variants. There's neither a detriment to the public, um, certainly not a substantial one. Um, yes, neighbors will possibly see part of that, but at 185 to 200 feet away with landscaping that will get larger. Um, it can't be perfect. We can't be guaranteed we'll never see an adjoining home, but I think that uh, uh, there's no substantial detriment to the public uh, or to the intent and purpose of the zoning plan. Um, and that's uh, evidenced by the fact, as John said, it was granted unanimous approval by the HPC, and that's the body that we look to first and foremost for protecting the character of these historic neighborhoods. We think it's a good application, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Anyone from the board have any questions for Mr. Keller? Go ahead, Mr. Simon. Mr. Keller, you, you testified about the landscaping that was installed on the adjacent property. I'm assuming that that's, even though it was done, it's not necessarily part of this application, correct? That's correct. So that, that and, and in terms of, uh, Mr. Wolf, you're not maintaining that part of an easement or anything like that, correct? Not, not at all. It, it was there was a lot of um, uh, brush from uh, from storms that have fallen over the years, and we worked with our neighbor. It was really impossible for them to get any of that uh, uh, any of the felled trees removed from their from their property without significant damage to their side. So we worked with them, and we you know cooperated on on removing the debris removing the hazards from the properties and we um, at the property line within a foot or so the property line put large at this point they're almost 26 27 foot tall uh, evergreen trees um, that we're the only maintenance that we're doing is we're watering them for the next you know probably for, for another year until they are mature enough to um to, to not mature enough until they're you know situated enough to, to live on their own but there is no easement we don't need we haven't asked for one. We have no need for one at this time. Um, I don't think there. I don't think we ever will need one. Um, we just want to be good neighbors. Okay. Thank you. Board members, any questions? Then I will ask the audience if they have any questions for Mr. Keller. I do not see any. Um, Oh, there we go, Mr. Rosenbaum. We'll bring him over. Oh. Uh, Mr. Rosenbaum, what questions do you have for Mr. Keller? Uh, I would like to ask Rich two questions. Uh, one was on his plan. There's some comments about a septic tanks or septic system. I'm assuming there's no septic field in the back that this would require any disturbance to. And two, if he could speak a little bit about the drainage and the increase to the impervious coverage and whether that water is going to be brought forward to the detention pond or how he was going to mitigate some of the increased impervious coverage? I'll talk about the septic. There, there is currently a tank. There is no field. Um, up until about six months ago, this was the last house in Milburn that was still on, that was still not, did not have a sewer hook, uh, connection. Uh, we have since put in a proper sewer connection. Um, it has not been switched over. The house is obviously, we're going to be doing renovations to it. So we're waiting um, to be uh, doing that work and the work that's going to be accomplished in this as part of this uh, uh, application um, to connect it to the sewer. But we have already we connected it to the sewer and that will not be an issue anymore. Uh, there won't be a tank back there. Not that there was a field anyway. It was just it was, it was pumped, you know, every several months. Um, but uh, it's going to be um, on the city sewer lines uh, going going forward. Um, and then regarding the uh, drainage, uh, Rich and Brian, I think would be the people to talk to about that. Thank you. Yes, Matthew, we've got about uh, a 1,400 square foot, 1,405 square foot increase in impervious area on the property. Um, that would be mitigated most of the water. In fact, we've already diverted most of the roof leaders on the house have been diverted to the detention pond in the front of the property. Um, but uh, we would be, uh, to the extent 
we think we can get the any uh, additional drainage out into that area. If not, we would uh, we would add some uh, dry wells. Obviously, if this board were to approve this, we would need uh, to a, to present a grading plan that must be approved by the uh, township engineer. And at that point, um, they'll make sure that we have mitigated and reduced any runoff from the existing to the proposed condition. So I think we can get most of that into the detention basin or the pipes that lead there uh, and ultimately get to there. Um, there's also some, um, some cisterns that we store water in to, to irrigate the property. So we think we can get all of that. Um, certainly is our intent to have none of that will go off the property unabated. It'll all be either directed into the existing or proposed um, detention systems. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Mr. Rosenbaum? Nope, that's it, thank you. Okay. Um, next, I guess, any other testimony, um, Rich or Jonathan? No, I, I, I think I'm done unless anybody has any questions. And I think, uh, um, I think that really wraps up our testimony unless the board has other questions. Um, we do have our landscape architect here, but I think um, the uh, we've already kind of discussed what was put in and you can bring Brian up if you'd like to, but I think that pretty much wraps up our application. Okay. Um, then any questions from the board for either Mr. Wolf, Mr. James or Mr. Keller? Then I'll switch to comments from the audience. Um, is there anyone playing along at home that has any comments regarding this application? I do not see any. So in that case, I will close the public portion of the meeting. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna open it back up real quick. Mr. Rosenbaum has raised his hand uh, and comment, maybe it closed too quick. So let me bring him back over and uh, have him make his comments. Sorry, thank you for okay. hearing me. Uh, we're gonna just, just we're gonna wait, swear, wait. We're gonna swear you in real quick. And just um, raise your right hand. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give in today's proceedings to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Your name and address for the record, please. My name is Matthew Rosenbaum. My address is 18 Marine Place, Short Hills. Okay, please proceed with your comment. Um, I have looked through the plans. I feel like since we're gonna be impacted visually more than most people, um, overall, I think the application is very sensitive to the condition. And I do think uh, John has been very cordial and very polite and done above more than he needs to do in the, in the past. So I believe that we're in favor for it. And uh, I know going forward, Hopefully when they do the uh, landscape and the retaining walls, we can work together to get something that works for everybody. So um, I don't have any issues with the application. Thank you very much for your comments. Yeah. Say one more time, anyone in the audience have any further comments regarding this uh, application? I do not see any. So as before, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. So with that, board members, what comments do you have, thoughts or otherwise? Don't all jump at once. I'll, I'll start off. Um, well, first of all, I mean, there's, there's a clear hardship here. I mean, the house is basically in, in the backyard with a tiny, you know, exception that, that is in the building envelope. Um, I, I think it's a very, very well thought out plan. Um, I, I think that everything that they're doing is is very tasteful. I love how they're, I mean, I know that it already went before um, HPC, um, but I just, I, I love all the thought and all the detail that's gone into um, maintaining the, the, you know, historic integrity of the house. Um, you know, and I think with the landscaping and, and all the plans, I could absolutely support the application. Great. Any other comment? Go ahead, Wolfgang. Okay. Yeah, I would just say that, you know, looking at an application like this is, it, it's, it's a very different type of experience in that 
it's it's not a normal property, so to speak. Um, it's a historic property. There's a lot of architectural and, and aesthetic, you know, considerations that need to need to go into it. And given the history of the of the of that home, and you know how it served basically as a as an adjunct or in addition to a neighboring property historically, now it's kind of sandwiched in. In, in a rather inopportune way from a zoning perspective, I suppose. Um, uh, given what, you know, given what they're doing with it, I think I could definitely, definitely support it. I think it, it's a beautiful, it, it's a beautiful addition to what they're, uh, to what they've already done. And I think it's gonna, you know, it, it's gonna only enhance the property uh, and yeah, what they've proposed. Thank you, Wolfgang. Go ahead, Steve. So um, I will echo uh, Jessica's, com uh, Jessica's comment on the obvious hardship given the home's placement on the property. And you know, when I visited it, um, clearly there's, you know, the neighbors are very far away. There's no negative impact on neighbors that I could discern. Everything is very well um, shielded and guarded uh, with um, uh, you know various planting and shrubbery. So I, I, I see no problem with the application whatsoever. Thanks, Steve. Any further comment? Joe? I'll just make the comment that um, the uh, Historic Preservation Commission is uh, very, very involved in properties like this, a very unique property in town. And I would be hesitant to do anything uh, opposed to what they have done which is to approve what is presented. I, I'm in favor of the project. Thank you, Joe. Um, so I've been in this house a bunch of times and Mr. Kellogg owned it. And, and you know, it's great to see an improvement made to it that, that's in keeping with, with sort of the heritage of the home, that it sort of modernizes it, it makes it more functional, uh, but still retains the, sort of aesthetic of the home and 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 kind of makes a nice enhancement to it so i think that you know, it brings it up into the to, to the modern day yet at the same time it is not an, you know an overwhelming um change to it so i think it's very thoughtful uh and it's a great uh it's a great application so i would i would support it with that um can i have a motion in this case I'd like to move approval. Can I have a second, please? I'll second. Joseph Steinberg. Yes. Steve Toger. Yes. Wolfgang Tutoris. Yes. Ashley Abigdor. Yes. Jessica Glatt. Yes. Craig Partner. Yes. Good luck with the project. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so next up we have calendar 3885-22, uh, 513 Wyoming, Wyoming Avenue, and Dedic and N. Sesum. Are you on this, Rich? Yes. Okay. And Anybody else? So it's Danny, isn't he? Or no? Danny on this one? No, 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 no it's not Danny. Um, is there anybody else providing testimony tonight? Just the owners and myself. Okay. I have. Okay. okay. Why don't we get you both sworn in and then we both raise your right hands, please. Do you swear from testimony about to present in this proceeding to be the truth, whole truth, none but the truth? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Names for the uh, record. My name is Nana Dedic. The address is 513 Wyoming Avenue. My wife's name is Natasha Sheshum. Richard Keller, engineer and uh, uh, planner for the applicant. Uh, sir, can you just spell your wife's name, please? Uh, first name is N-A-T-A-S-A. -A -A. Last name is S-E-S-U-M. Thank you. You're welcome. Will she be testifying this evening? She will not. She cannot. She not. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
Um, who's going to start? I can start. I'll introduce myself and tell you a little bit about the project and circumstances. Uh, in fact, I already introduced myself, but let me do it again. My name is Nana Dedic. My wife's name is Natasha Sheshun. We're the owners of the house being discussed now, 513 Wyoming Avenue. Uh, we have lived in the South Mountain area for just about two years now, slightly over. It's a lovely area. It's a good compromise between, um, you know, yard size and proximity to various facilities that we need. Uh, when we moved here, originally we were a family of five. Uh, we moved the two of us with our three school aid, school age children. Uh, but that situation has changed four months ago and our fourth child was born. That's why my wife cannot attend right now. My, my, my youngest daughter is a little bit sick, so she has to tend to her. Um, and so this caused us to, to consider um, uh, expanding, expanding the living space. So let me tell you a little bit about the project requirements here. So it's a four bedroom house right now. Uh, and the basic requirements is uh, we would like to introduce another bedroom. So to turn it into a five bedroom house. The reason for that is, uh, um, you know, our three older children need some reasonably quiet homework space. So each of them needs a dedicated room. Um, and the baby, the baby needs some quiet space to, to sleep and rest when needed. And eventually she will also need school, school workspace. Uh, and in addition to that, we would like to introduce an office room, some office space. And this is, you know, this is precipitated by the change in workforce worldwide. Everybody's working from home all the time. So frequently both my wife and I work from home. So some, some office space would be good. So finally, let me tell you just a little bit about the project design and the consideration that- Mr. Dish, excuse me one second. Joe, could you please hit mute on your, on your computer, please? Bottom left corner. It's not happening. I don't know why. Okay, Mr. Dej, please continue. So the final word I would like to say is a little bit about the project design and the considerations that went into minimizing the variance issues. So the uh, um, essentially we have tried work with the architect to minimize the disruption to the existing structure of the house, like obvious cost reasons, but also to, um, uh, to simplify construction. Um, uh, but regardless of, of, of how you slice it, it turns out the second and the third floor rear wall uh, has had to come out about three feet to allow sufficient overall living space and, uh, and specifically to allow a reasonably sized and shaped master bedroom. And that, that will turn out to be the main cause for the uh, relatively small variances that we are requesting this, this push out of the, of the rear wall. And again, it's on the second and the third floor, not on the ground floor. So with this, I would like to invite Mr. Richard Keller to continue. Okay, Rich, you know the drill? Yep, I'm a licensed uh, engineer and planner in the state of New Jersey. Licensed since 1989 as a professional engineer. Uh, from, I have a degree from Rutgers University with a declared concentration in water resources and environmental engineering. I also hold a uh, master's of architecture uh, with a declared concentration in urban planning and design. And that is from the New Jersey Institute of Technology, where I also taught for, for approximately 11 years. I have appeared peer before this board, the, uh, the planning board, as well as about 110 boards throughout the state of New Jersey as both a planner and engineer. And uh, since I last testified before this board, my licenses are still in good effect. Thank you very much. Please continue. Certainly. Um, I will, uh, I'm gonna bring up um, a screen that we prepared. It's, an, it's a neighborhood exhibit where I'm gonna talk you through a little bit and then I'll go through the architecture well, as well since the architect couldn't be here. So to start out, I will share screen. And I have uh, an exhibit, this would be A1. It is a neighborhood exhibit, the Dedek slash Sussum residence. I don't say it quite as authentically as Nenad does. Uh, 513 Wyoming Avenue, 
and that is Township of Milburn. The drawing date is also October 15th, and the aerial photo capture date is from this year, March 11th of 2022. And what we did is we showed uh, this um, with these near map images, they come in ortho rectified on the state plane coordinate system. We actually surveyed this um, a couple of points on the, on the same uh, state system so that we could overlay uh, property boundaries, the, out, the, the footprint of the home, as well as uh, take measurements off of the drawing that are, we find them accurate to be within a few inches sometimes, most of the time. Obviously, there's always a little bit of discrepancy with, uh, with roof overhangs because there are eaves over the building, and there's sometimes a little bit of a parallax if the, if the, um, if the camera is not right overhead, it's a slightly off, you'll see the roof will project a little one way or the other. So uh, if you look in the center of the drawing, if I window that up, you can see that uh, the dash line is the, is the actual house that we shot. Um, it's there are eaves that project on. They're a little bit asymmetrical, but the actually the actually the bottom of the footprint of the foundation is dead on um, with the bottom the ground plane of the photograph. So on this photograph, what we did is we wanted to show the neighborhood. The property um, is on the north side of on the west side of uh, Wyoming Avenue. It's about uh, 365 feet south from Milburn Avenue obviously located in the South Mountain section of the town, uh, where most of the neighborhood is in the R6 residential zone, with the exception of the, the buildings that, uh, the lots that front on uh, uh, Milburn Avenue. The property itself, as are most of them on the side of the block, is 7,020 square feet. Um, all of these lots uh, are for the most part 50 foot. Um, I will point out 60 feet is actually required in, in the zone. Most of them are 50. There are a few that are wider at 75 um, uh, and then go back to 50. But uh, the, the uh, required area is 6,000 square feet. Most of them are 7,000. The larger, the 75 foot lots come in at 10,500. The, um, what this, what we tried to show in this drawing is not only the existing house, but the location of the addition. And I'll get into the addition a little bit more detail when I go over the architecture. We wanted to show the, uh, the extent of the addition on the house. Um, what's happening essentially is that the most of the house is going over the existing uh, covered uh, and enclosed porch and enclosed over the stairs that go up to it with some storage underneath it. So the actual amount of additional footprint is relatively minor. And all of that um, projected, actually, there's no footprint change. Uh, it's actually the second floor and add a cantilever out over that space and drop some columns in. So that all goes over existing patio, which remains under the cantilever, and that goes over existing driveway, which will be cut back slightly. Um, so the the there is no change to the ground plant to the ground footprint. There is an addition that goes on to the second and third floor. The net increase um, in the in the building footprint is 103 square feet, which does put us over by 37 square feet. What I wanted to show on this drawing is if I take um, I estimated also where the the um, the root the eaves are because the next door houses I don't know where the bottom of the of the foundation is but I can see where the eaves are so what we did is we also projected the eaves from the architect's plan and I draw the blue line is the line that represents the the setback of our proposed house and I did that because I wanted the board to understand that essentially. Uh, we're no further back than many other houses in the neighborhood. In fact, the house right next door to us at 511 has virtually the same addition where there's no addition on the first floor, but it's got a second floor and attic addition that extends over. And that ex actually extends further into the backyard than we do, uh, as well as the house next to that at 509 extends further. And you'll see if you go down, some run shy, but then some of them also do uh, extend considerably on uh, house at 525 goes considerably deeper. So what we're proposing is not uh, atypical to the neighborhood. It's very much in, in consistent uh, and in keeping with the character of the neighborhood as it exists today. You can see that because the addition is centered on the back of the, uh, the main part of the house, there is no visibility from the street of the addition. It really sits, it sits centered in the lot. So the only people that can see it would be you look directly from the side and I'll have some photos of that um, or from the back, however, I point out to the home behind, which is still a good distance away, more than 100 feet. <coughs> um, the uh, there is 
both our garage and the neighbor's detached garage blocks any view of the addition or most of the view of the addition. The, um, the neighborhood you'll also see is pretty much developed with detached garages at the rear of the property, um, which means you have long driveways that go to the back garage. Um, and often because they're sometimes wide, either wide one car or two car garages, there's also a different additional maneuvering uh, area in the back. So you're adding coverage, both uh, significant amounts of coverage into the rear yard in terms of both the garages and the driveways, which expand to provide maneuvering room out of the garages. There's never really enough room to turn around, but you can get your car in and then back out all the way out. So the, um, the typology of the neighborhood um, automatically almost leads to difficulties in meeting rear yard unoccupied requirements and in also uh, driving up accessory coverage in the rear yard because the rear yards get small um, because on the 50 foot lots, the houses tend to be longer since they can't be wider. Like you see down on the 75 foot lots, they tend to be deeper. And when they get deeper, they push their rear yards back, which means you decrease your rear yard area over which you can only amortize 20% of accessory structures. So when you add in a garage, which is a triple threat because it's not only is it building coverage and not only is it impervious coverage, but it's also accessory coverage. So when you put an accessory garage in the back and you have a small accessory patio, it's very easy to quickly go over that 20% coverage because the narrowness of the lot forces the houses to be deeper. The, um, so with the, uh, with the garages counting as, as a triple threat, um, you increase the likelihood for needing variances for building coverage, accessory coverage, and rear yard unoccupied. And that's exactly what we need today. Um, the current property, and I showed um, on this exhibit, the current property, all of the current existing conditions are in the handwritten type and the uh, Arial font is the proposed. You can see the existing building coverage comes in just a 1% under what's permitted, 23% is permitted in the zone. Um, accessory, existing accessory coverage is already exceeds the 20%, it's up to 25.2%. We're actually reducing that slightly because when we, when we cover part of that existing patio that you can see under the cantilevered addition, it no longer counts as accessory structure. It, it's because it's subsumed by the house that sits above it. So accessory coverage actually goes down slightly Existing rear yard unoccupied does, as a minimum, um, we go from 19, 25% uh, is required. We actually go from 19.7 down to 19%. And it's not necessarily because we're adding any coverage back there. It's because we push the, we push the rear yard back, which creates a smaller rear yard, which means when you have to have 25% of your total lot uh, behind the house and unoccupied, it's basically impossible to achieve. This exhibit is also designed to show that um, that's really not atypical to the neighborhood, especially on these 50 foot wide lots, where again, the houses tend to be deeper and you have smaller rear yards. Um, I did, I took, uh, I downloaded all of the um, property data record cards from the Township of Milburn Tax Assessors, um, which actually, unlike most towns are, are fairly accurate. I've been really impressed with uh, the new assessor and his assistant, Kevin Steele. They've really been, um, they match our surveys quite quite closely. But I took the um, the square footage of the building from uh, property data records from the tax assessor's office. And then because these maps are orthorectified, I can actually put lines around things and I can get very accurate square footages. And they may be off by a half percent or a tenth of a percent, but they're fairly close. And you can see starting with 525, a few lots up, uh, that existing property, even if you look at it just by squinting, you can see that it's gonna be over on building coverage. Uh, it's over on accessory coverage, which you can't see this big patio, and uh, it's way under on, rear, on minimum rear and occupied. The same with the 75 foot lot. Um, because it's a 75 foot wide lot, um, it's, uh, it's up at 18%, so it's well under the 23% allowed, but it's accessory coverage due to the, uh, the patio, the pool, the connected patio, the patio that's uh, in, the, in the L of the house, and the one car garage, it zooms up to um, a rear, an accessory coverage of 27.8% and a rear gun occupied at 19.3. Similar next door uh, at 519, it's got a very large pool and pool deck and a two car garage. It's no longer usable because it's been abandoned uh, with the driveway removal. But that's that, uh, again, that's a wide lot, so it doesn't need the building coverage at 16.5. 
but its accessory coverage is 49.1, and the rear yard unoccupied is almost half of what's required at 13.5. Um, the same with um, the next, oh, went too far, sorry about that. Um, the next property under this one actually is back to a 50 foot lot, well over on building coverage, way over on accessory coverage, um, and the rear and occupied is actually only 4.9, so it's got a side loaded garage with a big driveway and a big deck. Um, similarly, uh, all of these properties uh, right next door at 515, building coverage is, is conforming at 22.8, accessory coverage uh, is slightly over at 23%, and uh, rear and occupied is deficient again with the patio and the, and the navigation space. Same with our property, same with the ones all next door. And you can see that um, almost every one of the properties, save one, that's at 507, uh, has a deviation from two out of the three metrics that we need relief from. So it's not atypical to the neighborhood. Uh, it is uh, largely caused by the, the uh, existing pattern of the neighborhood with the, uh, the a freestanding garage is one or two car, and then the driveways. So the um, the proposal, as was indicated, uh, was to create a fifth bedroom to accommodate the family and to create office space. And I think um, uh, Ned had put it very succinctly in, uh, he prepared the application, uh, put it in his description. Uh, it was quite succinct. I will say some of the numbers in uh, Ned Ed's uh, narrative were slightly off. The zoning table is correct, the notice is correct, and I'll go over that in a few minutes. So that's the, uh, that's the existing um, character of the neighborhood. I think the addition is really uh, no different. Um, if I go over to the other exhibit we have, uh, I prepared, which is A2, and this would be um, two annotated site and neighborhood photo photos. Uh, this would be A2. It is all photos were taken by myself last Friday, October 14th, and they do accurately represent the site as it exists today. I only provided two. Uh, one is of the front of the house. Um, I'm always happy when people decide to add to their homes and not tear down into a modern house that's kind of atypical and, and not characteristic of the uh, of the South Mountain section. I'm not a not an anti-modernist, but um, it's always easier to get all the program you need in a flat roof modern house than it is to add on to an older house that was built in the 40s and 50s. Um, from the street, you will never see the addition that goes back. Even when you peer down the driveways, you won't see the addition because they're step back. They're set back slightly on the uh, from the right line of the uh, house, and then because they're stepped in also somewhat from the top, uh, you may see a little bit of the corner uh, of the second floor um, as the as the attic roof slopes up. From the from the driveway, possibly. The second is look. This is standing in the rear yard. This is looking north uh, toward 511 Wyoming Avenue, and that basically that addition right next door is almost exactly what um, the applicant is proposing to do. Where they are leaving, um, they have a couple columns, three columns, I think that to be exact the same that will support uh, a cantilevered um, second floor and attic. That comes about three three foot nine inches off the off the main house. Um, it comes no further than the house next door. It's almost a, almost identical to that type of addition. So it's certainly not out of keeping um, with the neighborhood and and has no impact on the front and can vi very little be seen by the house behind because of the garage locations as indicated. So if uh, if I then go over to the architecture plans. Um, these were uh, part of your application package. They are uh, prepared by Stephen uh, Considine. Um, they are dated 3-26-2022. And I will use them to refer to uh, both some of the facades as well as the zoning table. Um, the diagram on the left is a little confusing because they blocked out all of the new uh, sort of attic space, uh, which is floating above. But it really, I think um, my aerial kind of showed really how they're really building over existing a significant amount of the existing home and really only 37 square feet. So it's an addition of 103 square feet um, um, to the actual building footprint and uh, represents a variance of 37 square feet. So if we go through the zoning table, you can see that uh, 6,000 square feet is required. We're at 7,020. 
Um, we're basically, we're, we're non-compliant with the lot width uh, as are most of the lots on our block. Um, we exceed the lot depth, which most of ours do, which is why um, the houses tend to be longer and, and narrower. Uh, the front setback is conforming, rear setback is conforming. Um, the side yards are all conforming, et cetera. It is until we get down uh, and floor area ratio is actually well under the, um, it's actually 35%. So it's not well under, but 35% is permitted, sorry, is proposed where 36% is permitted. So we are under an FAR. And I will point out that FAR is the metric that we use in this town on residences to control the mass, to make sure we don't overwhelm uh, the houses in the neighborhood. We're not atypical to the houses in the neighborhood in terms of mass. Uh, that's what that floor area metric is used for in a residential um, situation. And we are fully compliant with the building, uh, the floor area ratio. Building lot coverage, uh, we do add 103 square feet. So we go from an existing uh, conforming condition to being over by 37 square feet at 23.5. And you can see it doesn't take, you know, 103 square feet represents a 1.5% bump. So when you're dealing with small lots, it doesn't take much of an addition to get a big jump in the percentages. But I think you need to keep in mind that the actual addition in the, uh, the enlargement of the building footprint is only 103 square feet. And that takes us up to a deviation of 37 square feet. With regard to the rear yard unoccupied, again, what happens is um, from the existing to the proposed, the rear yard gets smaller. So, and while part of the patio goes away because the patio is staying, it's a usable patio, but part of it is under the house. So only 184 square feet of the 270, 276 square feet get counted. So technically a little bit of driveway goes away, a little bit of patio goes away, um, but we are also at the same time um, having a smaller rear yard. So while we do get, um, we, uh, we do go from 19.7 down, uh, down to 19 where 25% is 25% required. And then finally, accessory rear yard. Again, we talked about how having those garages in, in the back um, really drives um, us up very close to the 20% permitted. You can see existing between the garage and patio. We already deviate from the rear accessory coverage, 20% permitted, 25.2 proposed. Uh, we make that slightly better um, by reducing the patio um, and reducing the, uh, the yeah, just the patio, but it's still, uh, we get closer into compliance, but not quite. We're still at 24%, so still a variance is required. With regard to the actual um, uh, drawings prepared by the architect, you can see the footing plan really kind of shows that nothing happens to the first floor enclosed porch or the stairs coming down the storage underneath it. They're adding four columns, excuse me, not three, to hold up that uh, expansion that goes over the patio and over the driveway. If we go down to, so there is no first floor plan because there's no change to the first floor plan. You can see that what they're looking to do is to create uh, a roughly 18 by 15 um, uh, uh, owner's suite, bedroom ensuite with a bathroom, um, keeping the other two uh, bedrooms, having a, uh, uh, an improved bathroom. And then on the next floor, they're keeping the bedrooms they already have, but they're looking to expand into that area with uh, an office for um, the owners so that they can uh, get away from the first floor where often during the day, um, you know, a, a, a childcare will be with the four children um, between Natasha's running up and down to do mother duties, but they need a quiet uh, office space uh, since like many people, they are working at least part of their day, part of their weeks uh, out of their home. So they need a personal office space. And these are not extremely large size. You get nine foot seven by 14 for two desks. Um, it's, they're not uh, overreaches on the size. And you can see um, the addition goes uh, up over the first floor that just floats. There's windows for the, uh, for the cupboard uh, porch that sits below and the stairs up and the storage, et cetera. That doesn't change. Uh, you can see looking at it from the uh, left side, um, you can see that there's the house beyond. So this is the part of the house that extends beyond. And then from the, uh, the other side, from the neighbor next to 511, you can see that all you see is that uh, small extension of the house beyond what's there. Um, and that is not as far back as the adjoining homes or many of the other homes in the block. So that is the, uh, that's the uh, explanation of the architecture. Um, if we talk about the variance relief requested, 
Again, I think both of these variances um, can be approved as C1, and that's applicable where both the shape of the existing property, that being the narrow lot width um, from the requirements of the, of the ordinance, and more importantly, the location and configuration of the lawfully existing structures on the property, that being the detached garage on the connecting driveway with rear and maneuvering areas, um, they result in an exceptional uh, practical difficulty in adding uh, any additions to the rear of the house without the need for variance relief. Um, we're already, we're already um, have an existing non-conforming condition as to rear and unoccupied and accessory um, coverage. The, um, we think that um, with regard, so that certainly creates the, the positive criteria uh, with regard to the negative criteria, again, in two, two prongs, that there's no substantial detriment to the public good, and there's no substantial impairment to the intent and purpose of the zone plan and zoning ordinance. Um, by allowing the applicant to bring the home up to current standards um, with regard to home office space and enough space to raise their, their family, um, and uh, it doesn't certainly, uh, uh, it certainly doesn't um, have any negative impact on the neighborhood. We think there's no detriment to the public good. Um, there's, there's cannot be seen from the street since it's hidden by existing structures, both to the sides and rear of the property. The house is no deeper into the lot than the other surrounding homes as we demonstrated through the exhibits. Modifications to the house are de minimis. The building coverage is only over by 37 square feet, but to take away that 37 square feet would take that uh, owner suite and really make it minimally sized. That extra foot and a half makes a big difference in making that a viable space um, versus spending a lot of money and making it um, an, an undersized space. Um, the, there's no increase in lot coverage since the three foot plus cantilevered additions going over an existing patio. It complies with FAR, which I said is the metric for overdevelopment of a home. The modifications to the house are de minimis. Uh, the patio is technically reduced since it's part of the cover, uh, covered house. Um, so the, um, the really the driving factor is that the rear is being reduced by 233 square feet. Uh, and despite the reduction in the size of the patio, uh, the reduced yard area means we still need a variance for accessory coverage. Um, although the application technically brings the coverage closer to compliance, uh, the extent of the variance relief sought is consistent with other properties on the block and in the neighborhood. And we certainly see don't see no detriment to the master plan. Um, it certainly advances some of the purposes of, of zoning um, as enumerated in municipal land use law and mirrored in our master plan. It advances uh, general welfare and that it allows for an existing resident to add amenities that are consistent with the neighborhood, uh, a viable ensuite owner's bedroom and home office space. And it provides for a variety, variety of housing types to meet the need of the community. Um, you know, it's a fairly compact house and not all people who live in town have 2.3 children. Some do have four kids and the reality is you need five bedrooms. And I think it was a very tactful way to get, to get from four bedrooms uh, to five bedrooms um, and uh, and um, create a better living environment that's more versatile uh, and more useful for the owners. The um, Certainly in terms of the uh, goals and objectives of the master plan, again, goal is to promote the character of the township as a small suburb of the highest quality. I see nothing that cuts across that. And um, objective 101 is to protect the character of established residential neighborhoods and encourage land use and development at an appropriate scale and density. And I think this is an appropriate scale and density, especially when you view it in what the surrounding neighborhood already is. Um, in my professional opinion, uh, it meets the proposed, meets the proofs uh, for a C1 variance relief. Um, we don't think there's any detriment to the public good. And uh, we think that uh, this is um, actually fairly modest. And if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, they have that existing rear yard unoccupied condition, which is, you know, unfortunately, years ago, when when the uh, ordinance increased building coverage in the zone, uh, they didn't increase uh, make any accommodations for the fact that a lot of these detached garages drive up accessory use and they run down available uh, rear yard for rear yard unoccupied. So I think this is consistent with the neighborhood. We think it's a good application, and uh, I know you would make the uh, the applicants elated uh, if you were to approve it. All right, thank you, Rich. Um, any questions from the board for, for Mr. Keller? Okay. 
Yeah, if I could just clarify, I think you said this, but I just want to clarify for myself. When I'm looking at the design in the back and the and, and, and like the footprint area, like the the stone area that exists, the stone patio uh, that exists in the back right now, the new addition doesn't propose to go beyond that. No, it actually goes short of that. It goes considerably short. So the patio uh, does extend out. I think it was shown on my drawing. The um, uh, the patio. So so what's shown here when it where it says uh, mas mas dot masonry block. That's yeah. what's there currently. That's that's a portion of what remain of what's there currently. It's actually bigger now, but some of it is underneath the 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 heavy block, which is the proposed second story addition. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Keller? Uh, I'll open it up to the public for questions. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Keller from the public? Any comments from the public regarding this application? I do not see any, so we will close the public portion of the meeting. Um, board members, what comments do you have regarding this application? Go ahead, Ashley. Um, I would be supportive of this application. I think there is a clear detriment. It's a narrow lot. The garage is in the back, which is eating into it more of the numbers. Um, I think it's reasonable to be bumping out the second and third floor three feet. It's not really increasing the square footage that much. Um, and given his family situation and in the back, it also fits in with what the neighbors did, especially that neighbor to the left, if you're looking at the back of the house. Thank you. Further comment, Steve? Yeah, I would just say, you know, as Richard uh, clearly um, indicated, what's being proposed here is, uh, you know, existing with, with several homes, particularly the ones to the right. Uh, that was very uh, evident to me when I visited. And I, you know, you could just look down the, the, the line and you could see that. So, so it's kind of in conforming with the direction that the neighborhood uh, has been going for some time and will probably continue to go. So I can support the application. Thank you, Steve. Joe, you had a comment? Yes. This is one of those cases that we get all the time where Everybody else is doing it. Why not? Why not me? And um, I think the only reason I could support this application would be the fact that there's no floor area ratio application made before the board. So I would be supportive of it, although I'm generally opposed to everybody else who's doing it, why not me? So um, thank you, Joe. You know, I'm a firm, I, I, you know, pretty much in lockstep there with Joe. I'm, you know, I'm a firm believer that, you know, citing zoning violation to in furtherance of more zoning violation is never a great argument, but I don't know if that's totally the case here. Um, the, you know, this is an oversized lot for the R, for an R6. So, you could argue a C1 variance as to the hardship as everyone has a garage in the back and that's just sort of how it is. But I, I think under C2, we could live with this, um, that it's not particularly detrimental to the zoning plan and, and certainly to the neighborhood. Um, it, you know, it's not detrimental to the street streetscape. So um, I would be supportive of this application. Do I have a motion in this case? Move approval. Second. Second on the second. Joe Steinberg. Yes. Steve Toger. Yes. Wolfgang Tutoris. Yes. Ashley Abigdor. Yes. Jessica Blatt. Yes. Craig Kleitner. Yes. Good luck with the project. Thank you. Good night. I appreciate your time and consideration. Have a good night. Thank you as well.
Um, okay, and lastly for this evening, wrapping up the show is calendar 3892-22, Guido and Miriam Subotowski at 356 Hartshorn Drive in Shoreville's. Hey, Dan, who am I bringing over? Uh, Guido Subotowski. I just said, uh, okay. Okay, if um, you would both raise your right hand, please. Do you swear from the testimony about to give me tonight's proceedings to be the truth, whole truth, and by the truth? I do. Your name for the record, uh, you need to unmute. So tough, you're, you're muted. Daniel Dubinet. And sir, just your name for the record. Guido Subotowski. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, who would like to start? Yeah, I could. I could start us off. Uh, Give us your credentials, real quick, Danny. Oh, thank you. Um, practicing over twenty years, uh, licensed uh, residential. I practice primarily residential architecture um, in our neighborhood and surrounding communities. I received my uh, master's degree in NGIT and my license is current and, and good for that. Thank you. Your credentials are accepted by this board. Please continue. Okay, thank you. Um, well, let me share a screen and I'll take you through our proposal. So just to introduce you, uh, we're at 356 Hartshorn Drive. We're in the R4 zone. Hey, Dan. Um, yeah. Before yes. we continue, are these photos that have been previously provided to the board? Uh, and then some uh, additional. So there's uh, five slides. Let me see. One, two, three, four slides. And uh, they're in addition to what you already have in your package. Right. So why don't we why don't we mark as A1 the the four slides, four photo slides. And you took them? I took all these photographs, yes. And when? Uh, six months ago. Okay, so what is that? April, uh, give me a month. Uh, so we're in month 10, so uh, May. Okay. And yes, they accurately depict, well, the front elevation ac accurately depicts what's there today. Um, the house was built, I believe, in 2019. Um, I happen to be the original architecture, architect of the home. And one of the things that uh, inspired us when we talk about, so the proposal is to add a, a cabana pool house to the backyard. So uh, the original architecture is going to inspire uh, certainly what the pool house cabana will look like. So just to give you a little flavor of of the architecture of the house. Um, so again, we're seeking a proposal to add a cabana pool house slash patio to the backyard. And that requires uh, three variances. Uh, the first uh, variance that we were seeking to, to get this approved would be building coverage. So when the house was designed, um, of course, we. Uh, it's, it's at 14% uh, is the max allowed. So anything that we would do to this property would require a variance. Uh, so 14% on building coverage is what's existing and we're proposing 15.5%. So we're seeking an additional 453 square feet of uh, building coverage, which equates to about a 10.7% deviation. And I believe that would 
fall or a C2 variance for this. And I'd like, I'll, I'll take you through why I think it's a, a palatable and, and um, could fit on this property. The second variance that we need is lot coverage. So the maximum allowed is 35% and we're seeking 38.9%. Uh, so we're gonna be asking for an overage of 1,185 square feet, which equates to a 11.3% deviation from what's allowed. And again, I believe it's a C2 variance and, and I'll go through the merits of that in a minute. And the third variance that we're seeking is for the rear yard maximum accessory coverage. And the max allowed is um, 20% and we're seeking 25.3% and that's a 747 square foot um, DV, uh, overage and a 26.6% deviation. And I think that one is a more of a C1 variance where the shape of the property, it's truncated kind of a rectangle. It's 109 feet in the back uh, rear property line. So this is a 109 in the back and 150 in the front. So we we, lo we lose this triangle of uh, rear yard. If, if, if we had a rectangular lot, it would increase our rear yard unoccupied and we would not need the maximum accessory use coverage. Also, we're fighting uh, the topography. So the shape of the lot is, is somewhat of a hardship for the rear and the topography. We kind of sit in a valley um, from the homes to the right and left of us. Um, the, and I'll show you some photographs in a minute, but the property that's um, to the north is about 10 feet higher in elevation than us. And, and the property to the left is about 15 to 18 foot elevation change. So we kind of sit in low in the valley. And then the properties, all these properties that are in the rear yard are about 30 feet below us. So I think uh, one of the reasons why I felt like we could present this application is purely because of the unique character of this lot. Um, that make it um, a almost invisible to the neighbors um, and b no negative impact uh, to the neighbors or neighborhood. So I felt like this was a very interesting case where um, we have something that is already at its limit, and now we're asking to go over it. But I do think that there is a, really no negative impact to allow this. This is using part of the yard that the Subikowskis. Uh, probably we won't use. And the I think the idea of keeping uh, open in airspace and open greenery is, is really uh, to not create a congested environment um, for the neighborhood. And because of the site conditions of the adjacent neighbors, this gives us like an oasis back here. So the only uh, people who'd be affected by this would be the Subikowskis. And of course, um, the ask is for uh, a pool house for their pool. Hey, Dan, yes. I'm, I'm sorry I'm interrupting you. Mm -hmm. Because you're marking up or have marked up yes. this particular sheet, why don't we, and, and it's colorized, why don't we mark it as an exhibit, please? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, so why don't we mark it and with all the exhibits, if you can provide them to Eileen at the end, please. Absolutely. So we're going to mark this as A2 and we're going to call it marked up colorized version of plot plan. How about that? Okay, sorry for my handwriting. Go ahead. Okay, while we're looking at the site plan, a um, couple of things to note is a uh, no one's we won't be blocking one anyone's light and airspace. No trees will come down as a result of this structure and patio. Um, and what we're seeking to do, uh, the pool is installed. The pool is there with a minimal amount of patio space. So we're looking for um, a bathroom. That, excuse me, a bathroom here with a small changing area, uh, a hangout space, a little living quarters, um, a small bar and storage area for the pool. And then the patio uh, would extend to here. Um, and let me run you through, um, I think it might be nice to show you some site conditions. 
So this is a images that I took um, this week. Um, uh, I apologize, last week. And if you had a chance to visit the property, it was still there. I marked out with orange spray paint where the pool house could be. So these are, well, Dan, hold on. So yep. these are additional photos that are not in the application package. Correct. So why don't we mark this as A3 and we're going to call it um, nine uh, photo board with nine photos. Correct? Yes. And what's the date on this? Uh, so I took these pictures uh, last week. Um, let's call it the 10th. October 10th. Yeah, and they accurately depict what's there now. Um, and so the first image, the center image, is a Google Earth uh, image. And what I'd like to show, um, I'd like to show for this image is showing the cabana in the rear, this uh, yellow dotted line in the back is where the cabana will be located. And we're about 145 feet away from the adjacent neighbor to the left. And as I mentioned, they're significantly elevated with a lot, a lot of um, mature trees. Um, and then uh, the uh, neighbors in the back, uh, although I couldn't get a dimension for that because it was really far away, but there's a really, really, really significant elevation change. So they can't see us and we can't see them um, for sure. So I'll run you through some of these photographs. This is your approach when you get off the, when you come from the driveway and you can see the uh, elevation change of the neighbor on the right. Um, so very pretty landscape and they've already installed. Um, and then you can get a glimpse of the pool. And with the elevation change, there's this retaining wall that exists, which takes up a little bit of lot coverage. Um, and then as we move through the property, and I take you through, so this is the pool. This is the neighbor to the left, and you can see the elevation change there. And we're seeking to put our structure in the, in the back here. This is a view look standing. If I was in the proposed pool house, looking back towards the neighbor on Hartshorn to the right, invisible. This is a view standing at the house, looking back into where the area where we like to put the structure. Hey, 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 Dan, I'm sorry yes. I'm interrupting you again. Okay. Well, on the screen, what we're seeing, or at least what I'm seeing, is at least four photos at a time where you're saying, hey, in this photo, it's this. So if you, yeah, if you can better identify which photo you're referring to during your narrative, that would be helpful. Appreciate it. So this is, if I'm standing at the, the house, looking back at where we propose to put the pool house, it's sitting in this uh, location here. And so you could, you know, you could see how the elevation drops off uh, to the people in the rear. So this is what makes this application uh, work. Uh, otherwise it wouldn't work. Is this incredible site condition that it becomes invisible uh, to the neighbors. So there's really no negative impact uh, by allowing it, and it's also part of the yard that it, it will be underutilized. And so the question is, well, do we need to maintain the open rear yard? And, uh, you know, I think it there's the sense of privacy back here and openness anyway, that it's not hurt by allowing this application. Uh, again, this, this photograph is standing at this proposed pool house looking back towards the home. This photograph's looking at the adjacent neighbor to the left and again, invisible. Um, and then we've planted, uh, they're young, but we've planted all these uh, large evergreen trees that march along the, uh, the fence. And this is another view of where the pool house will be located. And it's just really, like I said, it's it's all by itself where it's a unique situation where there's no um, neighbors that would be ne neg negatively affected by as a result of this. And the last image is some three-dimensional renderings that we did to try to depict uh, the structure that we're proposing. So there's the pool house and uh, in all its Laurie, and, and we kind of did a nice thing where we're tying this retaining wall 
that we need for the elevation change into the pool house. And it's a very romantic structure that mimics the architecture of the existing house. And I open it up to discussion on uh, what, we're, what it is that we're asking for. Um, are you finished? Uh, but, hey, hey, hey uh, Craig, mm -hmm. if it's right with you, I'm also going to add to a three, the photo board with nine photos and colored renderings of pool house. All right. You have anything else to add on this? No, I will up for uh, I would love to hear the comments and okay. everybody thinks. Um then you can stop the screen share. Yeah, I have one last thing to know. Oh. We did reach out to the neighbors um adjacent to our property and we've gotten their blessing that uh, you know felt comfortable with what it is that we're asking for. And uh, as far as I know, we have you know blessings from the adjacent neighbors. Um, comments from board members. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah. So, <clears throat> hi, Dan. A um, couple questions. Just talk to us about, uh, you know, plumbing, bathrooms, electricity. It's going to be run into the pool house, please. Yes. So we will need uh, to run a sewer line out there for the bathroom uh, and uh, water supply lines. We'll also need a um, temperature to control the temperature in, in there. So it's uh, no, you know, in the bar will be no uh, cooking. So uh, no, no way we'd use this as a, as a guest house. Um, so yeah, we would need the utilities to be run out there. Okay, thank you. So here's the big question I have. You have a 20 or 30,000 square foot lot with in an R4 zone, which is 20,000 feet. So you're essentially 50% over the zone requirement, okay? I'm struggling with the C1 hardship. I just don't see a hardship here. So is it possible to build a pool house that conforms to this large lot? Uh, it's not possible to build anything that would conform because uh, the house is currently at its building coverage and lot coverage um, max requirement. Uh, so yes, so we looked at obviously, uh, can we, should we, uh, other places to cut back? And there absolutely are, um, but then we thought, well, to what avail, I guess, uh, you know, is it for the neighbors and, or, or is it just the numbers? So it's a really tricky, tricky lot because of the shape of the lot. And then when you go out there, there's a, a swale. So it's pretty unbuildable for, uh, anybody so that's where the buffer between the neighbors so just and the reason i say it is it's just such a unique site conditions that although the numbers are not great it, you you look at the site and you're like well what's the harm and of course uh it's a nice ask and there potentially are ways to reduce uh, lot coverage um and again it was like to what avail so i wanted to hear some comments and, and get some feedback okay Anyone have any feedback? Yeah, I do. Ahead, okay. Uh, but what's what are the effect? Are there any? Is there any impact as to runoff, given that you're just reducing impervious? No, well, good question. You're, uh, you're no, increasing the impervious, you know, area here. No, we're going to handle all the water on site with the additional drywall tanks uh, for the build. You know, what whatever new impervious coverage will be handled on site with our seepage pits. Which okay. the current house has, and they work well. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? I, I just, I'll just, uh, I agree with you, uh, Craig. You know, initially, you know, for my first concern, of course, was impact on neighbors, um, like we had earlier this year. But it seems like a very large uh, structure to be putting up, uh, and and you know, as to use Dan's phrase, it's a pretty big ask. So I, I, I don't know, I'd love to hear what other board members think about the size of the pool house relative to what would be more, you know, relative to what's, you know, reasonable or the norm. 
I I agree. Um, I'm concerned by the numbers, by the asks, um, and by really not seeing a hardship beyond, um, you know, that the applicant just wants wants more. I mean, the applicant has a, you know, the, the house, the pool, a patio, and just wants more. I'm I'm really not seeing any hardship here. So I have the same concerns that um, my fellow board members have pointed out. Any other questions for Mr. Dubinet? Uh, may, the uh, may the applicant just add one more note? Oh, absolutely, feel free. Thank you so much, and thank you for your time this evening. Uh, I, I just wanted to point out one thing is to, you know, to Danny's point, while yes, we have a, an approximately uh, just under 29,000 square foot lot, uh, looking at our rear yard, approximately, Again, it's off the top of my head, but approximately you know, four to 5,000 square feet of what we have in the rear is either four to five feet elevated above us to one side or four to five feet below us on the other side. So while looking at, you know, one thing, if you can look at the survey, uh, the other thing is obviously when you observe the field condition, you see the significant difference in uh, slope on either side, which is what really narrows us in the rear yard. And while, again, we can understand and can appreciate the concerned with looking at it on the map of the survey and seeing that uh, why the need for the additional structure. But as you can imagine, when we look at the field condition and looking at that, you know, at the lot, at the lot itself, uh, you know, that's where, like I said, it gets a little uh, tighter back there. So it certainly is not, um, uh, you know, the concern that we would see, especially if we had discussed it with, uh, you know, with our neighbors and their potential concerns. I hear what you're saying, but you don't have any bulk variances that speak to that. You know, you don't have setback issues. You don't have any of this stuff. It's strictly coverage. It's strictly lot coverage, building coverage, and accessory coverage. So the topography really doesn't play into this. There isn't, there isn't that, you know, we have to put it here because of that. There's really none of that. Yeah, I think the topography is like, works in our favor in terms of hiding the structure from anybody's views. So that's why... Uh, when I look at, the, and again, it's about a 10% deviation. I know that the property can handle the, and we're not talking about mass, but I know it can handle this extra building coverage. Uh, in terms of lot coverage, um, something I uh, thought about was, of course, we would love to have the extra patio, um, but that would equate for about 773 square feet of a reduction. So the ask would be a 3.9% deviation. So in terms of numbers on paper, if that was something uh, I'm hearing, obviously the, the comments. And so while I was sitting here tonight, I calculated that if we got rid of the patio space to the side of the cabana, we'd be at a 3.9% deviation, which is pretty small. And I know that it's not gonna impact anybody. Um, so that was one thing I had looked at. I don't know how, how the board feels. Um, well, the board feels you should have submitted an application like that. Well, we want, you know, listen, you have the, <laughs> you have the time to. I mean, you know, you know, this is a big ask. I, know I mean, it's so, so it's not like, well, when I'm deep, I'll just go deeper. I no, mean, so. It's just when you go there and you see the impact, I'm like, well, there's, there is no impact. So we have a good case. But uh, having time to reflect tonight, uh, I'm like, well, you know, listen, uh, the board, I, I, I think I know the board pretty well, that numbers are numbers, rather forget about the site conditions, numbers are numbers. So if we could maybe, it's something to think about, we reduce that patio by 773 square feet, um, would reduce our numbers a lot. And then it would put us, um, out of needing the accessory use coverage variance. And it would put us at a 3.9% deviation on lot coverage. And I spoke to Guido and that was something that uh, we said, let's see how the board you know, reacts to this, but that would be something that we would love to uh, concede to, because again, it's a nice to have, not need to have. Um, and the structure is just something that uh, was a dream of theirs, of course. And, there's no hardship, but I do think the property can handle that 10% deviation. 
Okay, with that, I'm gonna open it up to, con to questions from the, um, from the audience. Is anyone in the attendees that has any questions for um, the applicant or his professional? that any comments from the attendees? I see no hands raised. So with that, I'll close the public portion of this meeting. So board members, what say you? Can I just ask is, is has the patio been withdrawn from yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if it officially has yet. Yeah, okay, so. I just want to make sure. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm not, I'm not really, like I said, if that's the case, then I want to see it. I want to see what it's going to look like. I want to see the whole thing drawn out. I mean, I'm not really going to sit here and play, let's make a deal with the patio. No, so, no, I understand. No. So with that, what comments do we have for, for Mr. Dubinet? Well, it's certainly, okay. not, it's certainly not a hardship variance. Whatever this ends up being, if there's something which is submitted that the board can eventually be okay with it certainly is not yes it certainly isn't a hardship variance yeah i'll go next i mean i think this is just gross overdevelopment I and mean, that's the bottom line we have when you have a lot that is 50 percent larger than it than the r4 district requires and that's big you're, you're already in the r3 district size lot here um and and just to you know plunk down a a, a pool house patio bar this i mean like I said, it's just a Hail Mary. I, I, I just don't see it. So I wouldn't be in favor of this application. Any other thoughts? I have those, I have those same concerns. Um, the one thing that I will say is that I, I do see, you know, D Danny's side of, of it when I went to visit the property, that th there really isn't much, if any, impact. Um, to really anyone, to the to the neighbors or anyone else. So, so I, you know, I, I can see that argument, but I'm still, you know, I'm I'm still feeling the same way that I feel that this is just too big of an ask without any hardship. Um, there's just really, you know, no no legitimate justification in my mind um, for the project the way that it currently stands. I mean, to circle back on that, you know, we have, to, we have to look at it from a C1 or C2 perspective, okay? C1, clearly that, that bar is not crossed. And even from C2 is, you know, is this type of development detrimental to the master plan? You say, okay, well, we're going to take a, lar a lot that's oversized for the zone, and then we're going to overdevelop that. I mean, I'd argue that that is detrimental to the master plan. That is detrimental to the code. So even if you can hide it from the neighbors, it's still detrimental to the zoning plan and the master plan to have just overdevelopment of a lot just because no one sees it. Anyway, so uh, any other thoughts? I, I just want to remind the board, obviously, if we're, we're just dealing exclusively um, with C2, that the applicant needs to, would need to demonstrate that the zoning benefits resulting from uh, allowing the deviation must be for the community. In other words, it's, it, the standard is whether we're going to see improved zoning and planning that's going to benefit the community uh, and not merely for the private purposes of the of the owner. Um, so that's the that's the standard. It's it's to provide an opportunity for a better zoning alternative for the property um, to meet you know certainly the positive criteria for the C two and then under the negative criteria you know you're well aware of it in terms of you no know, substantial, uh, you know, impairment to the neighborhood or, or impairment to the zone plan or zoning ordinance. Thank you, Rob. Um, and any other, go ahead, Ashley. So I've been wavering a bit. Um, so I looked at the numbers, I went to the house and said, oh, they're asking for a lot, but then you look around and yes, it's quiet, it's insulated. Yes, they are asking for a lot. And then given what Rob just said, I just don't see how this benefits the community. It just seems to benefit the owner. So. Um, so I guess, uh, Joe, do you have any comment? Are you aligned?
that's a no, yes. Okay, so I'll mute. So, uh, so what do you want to do? I mean, I guess you can smell what's being cooked here. Yeah, okay, I, I, I see chose the thumbs, the thumbs down. <laughs> yeah, chose doing the thumbs down. Pretty, pretty, pretty cut and dry there. Yeah, that's that. I would, of course, love the opportunity to uh, obviously reduce and try to uh, try to maybe create a small structure that a smaller uh, structure. Of course, let less lot coverage. There's a lot of you know. There's some things we could do to reduce the lot coverage for sure. So it's a very very small percentage over what's allowed. Um, and again, come back uh, next meeting and we present uh, a, a slightly modified version. Okay, so uh, Eileen, when is the uh, next meeting that this case could be heard? December 5th. How does that work? Works for me, Guido, is it good? Yes. Great. We'll see you on December 5th. Okay, appreciate your time. Thank you guys. Sure, thank you. Um, with that, that concludes our applications for this evening. Um, is there anything in the audience that would like to be discussed that's not on the agenda this evening? You, I see no hand, I'm sorry. Did we actually carry that? Did, did somebody oh, announce yeah. so, so that case will be carried with no further notice. So if there is anyone here in the audience that is here, uh, to go to our website, but it will be uh, carried to December 5th. No further notice needed. With that, there are no comments. Um, so, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? All right. Bye. Have a great evening, folks. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. Take care. Good night, Eileen.